Me, 30 male, with my girlfriend's 27 female, family, following my sudden inheritance. Feel like my life is shattering. Where do I even begin? I'm so lost right now, I don't even know how to put things into words or find a good starting point. I guess it goes with how two months ago, my life was exactly where I wanted it to be. I've been with a girl of my dreams, 27 female, for the last three and a half years. We have a house, animals, both of our families get along beautifully, and honestly, the last three years with her and my family and her family around the holidays have been some of the most warm, fuzzy memories that I've had in my entire life. And believe me, I've been thinking about those times a lot lately. So, like I said, this problem is going to come in parts because my entire life feels like it is on the brink of completely falling apart. My mother was a very, very wealthy woman. Most of my life, she and I did not get along very well, but I started working in the family business roughly five years ago, and since then, we've actually developed a great relationship. It was one of those things where after many years of feeling that my mother hated me, she was at last proud of me and not afraid to say that she loved me and valued me. Then last month in mid-March, she passed away. I'm tearing up thinking about this as I type because I've always felt that despite her resentment towards me in my early years, I loved my mother more than anyone else in the world. I won't say much more than that. She's had a hard life in spite of her wealth, and I feel I could write a whole book on our relationship. Anyway, she's gone, and my siblings and I are now extremely wealthy, and have taken possession of the business and all of her investments and property. If that isn't scary enough, I'm having a hard time figuring out what I need to do next. The business I was associated with, I can handle, and my siblings and I have really come together on this, and they seem to trust me with that part of it but it doesn't wash away the hurt and guilt that I feel that I only got a few good years with the woman who gave me life. Anyway, my plan is to marry my girlfriend by next year, and we have already discussed the prenup situation, which I will be getting due to my newfound wealth. She has been nothing but wonderful after my mum's death, but the problems come in her family. I won't go into too much detail, but I love these people, like an extension of my own family, but they already have started trying to pry exactly how wealthy I am out of my girlfriend, and her mom has always had a gravitational pull towards, for a lack of a better term, pyramid schemes. Her first sibling, Terry, just got married and is working a fast food job. Terry and his wife have decided that they will be starting a family soon and stated that they want wife to be a stay-at-home mom. This talk has only recently popped up and has been brought to my attention, and I feel like I'm being paranoid, has been directed at me as there is absolutely no way they would be able to afford this on the money that they currently make or even while living in their small apartment. Like, they're expecting me to help them out in a situation that they are wholly unable to handle right now. Sibling number two, Leslie, has run into some pretty serious legal trouble and is also pregnant. The father has a history of abuse and neither have steady incomes. They've recently come back into our lives after a four-year-long absence between girlfriend and Leslie. Though prior to this, the two have always been extremely close, as girlfriend is with all of her siblings. As throughout their childhood, a lot of the time all they had was each other. Sibling number three, Casey, who I hardly ever speak to, has even started chatting me up on Facebook more than she ever has in the entire time that I've known her. Is it just my brain developing into paranoia, or is this actually happening? Like the lottery horror stories you hear where people come out of the woodwork with their hands out when they smell money on someone they know. I know for a fact, my mother, for all her faults, fell victim to this when she inherited this money. She became increasingly bitter throughout her life due to all of the husbands and friends that took advantage of her for what she could do for them. She drank herself stupid every day for 30 plus years and moved through carton after carton of cigarettes and alienated her own children. I don't want to be like that. I don't want that to happen. It's been less than a month and I've had more money than I know what to do with and I'm afraid to spend a dime or do anything with it because I feel like my girlfriend's family is only the beginning. What's worse, and will probably make me look like a total shithead, is my girlfriend has already committed to helping Leslie. They were close their whole lives, and with all of this legal trouble and pregnancy, girlfriend cries at night thinking about what's happening to her. She has not asked me to help financially or anything, but I've been there every step of the way to help support them and her as best as I can. 
but how will it look when my girlfriend starts giving out her money to people while I don't and get viewed as a selfish Scrooge? All of this is just too much. The last three years were so wonderful. So many magic trips to the beach, wonderful holidays, surrounded by not one but two families full of great people that accepted and loved me, and now it seems like, because I lost my mother and am getting a windfall because of it, everything is changing. I don't get to be happy with family anymore, and my whole life is crashing because of this. I know this is so far beyond a first world problem. Poor baby is now a multi-millionaire and is a little sad that he can't have a happy Christmas. Wah wah. But I feel so broken. I miss my mum. I don't sleep at all. I hardly eat. And despite knowing full well the path my mother went down, I've been drinking a bit and smoking weed more than I ever had. On a daily basis, in fact. My siblings seem to be coping just fine, and now I feel like everyone is out to get me. Even my girlfriend is getting a little tired of hearing me voice my concerns over girlfriend's siblings 1-3 to three, and her mum's sudden extra interest in me, which is understandable. They are all very close and take up for one another. Now I'm even doubting myself and thinking it's all in my head maybe. Too many times my mother drunkenly telling me about all the times she trusted people and was let down. I'm just so lost. To me it seems as though the linchpin here was the girlfriend. I don't blame her for not understanding the potential butterfly effect of releasing this knowledge into the world, but this doesn't seem as though it was knowledge that you willfully handed to her family. Because you have the unfortunate experience of seeing the corrupting influence of too much money in one person's life. This is just my opinion, but I don't think she understands how bad that is and what willingly giving up that information to her family will be like. As immoral as it potentially, yes, is, and I understand that, some things are better left unsaid for everyone because, yeah, these guys are falling upon hard times. You absolutely can choose to extend an olive branch if you'd like, but you're seeing the same thing that happened to your mom happen to you now. There's definitely Redditors that will give good advice. My advice would be to get professional help in how people that have gone through this handled situations like yours that you're dealing with right now. In the comments, I am just Jenna says, OP, I can sympathize. When I was 23, I came into a good deal of money. Nothing like what you describe, but a healthy amount that could have set my retirement for life had I been smart. I didn't inherit or win it. I got it because of a car accident settlement, but that didn't stop all the people coming out of the woodwork with their hands out. I lost friends. My best friend thought that I should buy her mom a house because when we were 16, we both said that's what we'd do if either of us won the lottery. When I refused, she got angry, and we aren't friends anymore. In the end, I lost my money because I usually couldn't say no to all the emergencies my family and friends had. I have horrible medical problems and terrible insurance. That money was supposed to be there for that, and when the handout stopped, I lost people, and the money is gone too. Don't be me. Pirate Name says, I was also this person. I had a ridiculously high paying job at 19 and lived at home. Once I moved out at 21, I had a huge savings account, which my boyfriend at the time found out about and told many people. I have been told many times that I'm a doormat and, oh boy, did everyone take advantage of that over the next three years. I got rid of all those people from my life, but now struggle to make ends meet most months. Lurky Lurk says, Ask your girlfriend not to talk to her family any more about your finances. When any of them try to bring it up, change the subject or tell them that you are still grieving for your mother and you can't talk about it. You don't owe these people anything, and as far as your girlfriend, if you see that she's starting to give more than she can afford to Leslie, ask her to sit down with you and talk about the shared household budget and ask her to look realistically at how much help she can give while remaining solvent. As long as your girlfriend isn't changing, and the issue with Leslie seems to be mostly about the kid on the way, which would have happened even without the inheritance, the rest of her family can't do anything to you unless you let them, and it looks like you won't fall for that. Good luck the two of you, and my condolences. Sorry about your mum. Of course you're emotional about this money. It's what your mum's left you. If your inheritance were a collection of salt and pepper shakers, you'd be upset to know that they're appraising it too. I suggest that you have a heart-to-heart -heart with girlfriend about the money. 
before people marry, talking about money is essential. Explain that it's your mum's business and you intend to grow it instead of cashing out. Discuss the type of lifestyle you'll have that will allow you to grow the company, that will be a good balance of freedom, pleasure, attracting attention, and sustainability. Make sure she's on side and understands that this means that there can be some woo, we're rich, but it comes at a cost, namely alienating others. I suggest doing what so many pro bowlers do, offer everyone a job, explain that you're not the manager, so the manager has to treat them like anyone else, but you will get them hired. If you don't want them at your company, buy a franchise and hire an experienced manager with those instructions. Everyone with their handout gets a job, but no one is promised that they get to keep that job. Help the sister in the legal emergency, but overall, you need money, here's a job, will be your stock answer. Sure, you aren't enjoying the money yet, it's not free, it came with the loss of your mum, and girlfriend has to get that. But if you plan well, it can mean much more freedom. Don't let it be a burden. And now, on to the update. First, I just want to say wow, this whole thing blew up and has made me feel much better about the whole situation. Thank you everyone for your understanding, condolences, and advice. I read the lottery winning thread that many of you linked to, and while I'm not currently $300 million richer, I will look into a smaller scale version of all the things that you offered up. I'm not sure if it's worth writing a whole update, but last night I called my sister and drove an hour to her house and stayed the night with her, her husband, and my nieces and nephew. Over some beers, she and I started talking about the whole situation. Oddly, it's the first time we've really talked about anything alone without attorneys or my other siblings around since my mother died. Side note, she passed away on March 8th, and I know there was at least one comment that said this seemed like everything was moving too fast. Anyway, it turns out she isn't as together about everything as I thought she was. I showed her the thread and all of the replies, and both she and I agreed to talk to a financial advisor and look into getting attorneys to help us with this. She had been primarily working with my mum's attorney up until now. I'm going to look into setting up a trust as well. Nothing too crazy, but enough that I can give small gifts to these people to have a cap on it, so to speak, for whenever it does come up. I talked to my girlfriend on the phone this morning and kind of laid it all out, and she was in total agreement. She said that she was surprised Casey has suddenly started talking to me and that it was very suspicious. She also said that Terry's wife brought up the kids again and was showing her houses they wanted to get that were way out of their price range, and my girlfriend kind of played dumb and just kept asking questions about how they plan to afford all of that, so I know she and I, for now at least, are on the same page. Lastly, when I was talking to my sister last night, she said something that both uplifted and destroyed me. We were talking about our mum and what a hard ass she was, and my sister said that one of the last conversations she had with our mum, my mother said, You and brother trust OP. He knows what he's doing, and he will make sure that everyone is okay. Anyway, thank you all again for all of your comments. I feel like a better and stronger person just one day later. In the comments... I think you're making the best decision. People are absolute vultures if you allow them to be, so you must protect yourself. I'm glad your girlfriend is on board with you. That's a great aspect of this because if she hadn't been, this could have been way more complicated. Again, I'm sorry about your mother. It sounds like she truly loved you and your sister greatly. People show love in different ways. Good luck with everything. OP replies, She has been nothing but wonderful and supportive throughout all of this. 100% the woman of my dreams. We started talking today about going away for a long vacation at some point when everything settles down. I think we need it. And you're spot on about my mum. She was a hard lady to know, and I wish we had more good years together. But I'm so grateful for the five or so years that we had, which I know most people don't ever get. I'm in your shoes. My grandparents were wealthy and no one knew. I'm glad you're getting a trust. You must have that, and a financial advisor is a must also. Do your own research on the financial advisor. I would really try to keep low-key around friends. On gifts, I don't do it. People will take advantage and come back for more. I would get books by Dave Ramsey on how to best handle your wealth, and on a personal note, I hate it when people say that you're lucky. A loved one had to die to get that money. I didn't win the lottery, and I still work 68 to 72 hours a week, and I like what I do. Short Lemon says, 
Quote, you and brother trust OP. He knows what he's doing and he will make sure everything is okay. She knew the whole time. This part had me tearing up too. It's clear from your last post that the things that you value, love, family, trust, and respect are the things that you surround yourself with on a daily basis. You said that your mother too grew bitter, and you recognized how she got to that point. You are actively trying to avoid it, and that's good, OP. That's amazing. My only advice to you is to not get caught up in the nostalgia, and I think you already know this, whether that's by 1. Deluding yourself into thinking that the monetary handouts will restore your past. It seems like you know this, but speaking from experience, don't get lost. 2. Growing bitter now that life is different. I think you're going to be just fine, OP. The road might be bumpy, but it's heading to a good place. And thanks to your wife too, you've got a great team member on your hands. And OP replies, Thank you. Throughout all of this, she has been my rock. And if anything, it has really shown me that she is the person that I need to spend the rest of my life with, no question. Posted by user NoBuy4881, titled, Am I the asshole for calling my father-in-law a pervert? I have a seven-month-old baby boy. I'm breastfeeding, but baby is currently weaning. I'm convinced that my father-in-law is being weird about my breastfeeding and not in a that-makes-me-uncomfortable way. I made the baby popsicles from my boob milk a few months ago, and my father-in-law put in the group chat that I'd love to try one of those, with a hearts-as-eyes emoji. I said, WTF? They're made from breast milk, and he said he didn't notice that caption. Today I baked the baby some muffins. It's a recipe that called for half a cup of breast milk, so I made them as per recipe. Father-in-law came over unannounced and said, Oh yum, someone's been baking. So I told him, those muffins are for the baby, they are just fruit, flour, and breast milk. I have a normal cake that we can have. I then left the room to wash my hands, came back in, and one of the muffins was missing. I asked husband and he had no idea, so I asked father-in-law, and he said that he ate it. I said, that's disgusting. I told him they were the babies and contained breast milk. He doubled down and said that it's okay because breast milk is vegan. Note, no one in this story is vegan. I told him that he's a creepy pervert and to get the hell out of my house. Husband is baffled by the whole thing and was convinced that it was a misunderstanding, even though I explicitly said they were made with breast milk. Father-in-law said I'm a dick because I'd made loads and the baby would not miss out. Mother-in-law was blowing up my phone until I asked her if she was really okay with father-in-law drinking milk that came direct from my breast. I think she didn't get the whole story. My sister's saying that it's freaking gross and father-in-law is a weirdo. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think jumping straight to accusing him of being a pervert might have been over the top and I think I might have overreacted. Husband said that eating the muffin was weird, but he might have just been curious and he didn't think of the connotations. This is not your everyday situation and I'm here for it. The fact that you had to repeatedly drill into this man's head that hey, this is breast milk, this is a boundary, I'm not okay with it, please respect my boundaries, and he's like, oh, you know what, I have no brain, I'm just gonna step right over this boundary because I'm an idiot, I don't care, screw you, breast milk yummy. This man has been given ample amount of warning, ample amount of do not do this, and yet still willingly chooses to be a complete weirdo creep cretin. He was told not to eat the muffin because it's breast milk. It's really messed up if you do it, yet he still did it. He's a creep. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near him. I think he's an asshole. I think that your husband has a side of asshole for trying to cover for your dad. Father-in-law's excuse is complete tripe. Thank God mother-in-law and your sister actually understand what's going on and why what he did was wrong. My judgment, not the asshole. Now in the comments... Strictner685 says, He's weird, but what insane cookbook are you reading? <laughs> Quote, It's a recipe that called for half a cup of breast milk. You know, as recipes so often do. <laughs> OP replies, It's definitely not completely out of the realms of normal when it comes to baby weaning. If you look up BLW recipes, a lot of them use breast milk and advise you can use formula instead. But we don't have formula in the house. Also, as a side note, it's not even vegan because vegan implies the animal, in this case you, gave consent to provide the breast milk. You did not give consent. 
He's just taking it and consuming without regard to how you feel about it, which is very violating. Is he commenting with heart eyes for regular recipes you make because he just loves popsicles or whatever? Probs not. This guy is insane and creepy AF. If we're going to be pedantic, there's a difference between consenting to milking and consenting to the consumption of product after it's separated from the body. Crock of Pot says, Not the asshole. How hard is it not to eat boob milk muffins, dude? Father-in-law said I'm a dick because I'd made loads and the baby wouldn't miss out. This is... not the argument he thinks it is. Why is he tracking how much breast milk you produce and why does he think that he has the first right of refusal on it? The entitlement is off the charts. He's obviously talking about the tons of tiny muffins lying around that he wanted to try. He is disgusting and highly inappropriate. Your husband might not be sensitized to this because it's normal given the home he was raised in. First time, he thinks he's funny. After that, creepy. Sad to say that you needed to firmly correct his behavior right off the bat, of course, at the very high probability of him turning it around on you. Each of us, both men and women, should try over time to help their partners grow, including growing out of immature and inappropriate behaviors learned in childhood. Good luck working on your husband. He probably has a lot to unlearn. This is giving me strong Stephen Powell, Susan Powell's father-in-law vibes. Her husband seemed oblivious to the advances towards Susan, even when she told him about it. And now, on to the update. So I asked my husband what he thought I was mad about. He was in the room, but on the other side and occupied with the baby, and he said he didn't realize that his dad actually ate the muffin. He thought I was pissed because he was messing with them. He also didn't remember the group chat incident, but agreed that both incidents together is creepy. I called mother-in-law to clear the air, and she revealed that father-in-law has always been very interested in lactation, and she actually only fed husband for four months, and always behind a locked door. Apparently, he moved jobs after a woman complained that he kept intruding on her pumping in a designated space in the office. I've told them father-in-law is not welcome around me, and have asked for the key to our house back. I shared the concerns about him tampering with my milk and contaminating it, and also that if his own wife wanted him locked out, then I'm entitled to that too. The comment that hit my husband was the one about father-in-law getting off for years on the memory of eating the grocer's F baby muffin. Husband said that he won't be able to look father-in-law in the eye again. More on mother-in-law. OP says, I wouldn't say mother-in-law is on my side. She told me this information in a way that sounded like it was totally normal for a man to need to be locked away from women when they're feeding babies, and I kind of brought this on myself for not locking him out. I am actually really creeped out that he's possibly been able to perv on me feeding at their house. I go to another room, but I've never felt comfortable. Guess they'll need to wait until the baby is fully weaned until we visit there again, if we ever do. To clarify, did mother-in-law feed father-in-law for months behind a locked door? No, she fed my infant husband. My father-in-law creeped her out so much that she got a lock for the door. He'll make a copy of the key. Oh, the new locks are a given. Asking for the keys is a symbolic thing and also gives me all the justification for completely losing my shit when I inevitably get a notification saying he's trying to open my door. I'm not really a crunchy mum. I breastfeed because of the immune benefits and then had to go down the rabbit hole of making my own baby food because baby has allergies and so do I. It's just easier to manage this way. I'm in the UK so I could get cow milk protein-free formula for free, but it smells gross and you need to sterilize bottles and make them up one at a time and it's just too much hassle. Why the photo originally? Oh, I took the photo of the baby in his chair eating the popsicle, and then I thought I'd better caption it to explain that it's breast milk, so that no one thought that it was okay to give the baby anything when they have him, since my mother-in-law was obsessed with the idea of giving him baby rice. So it was photo, he is baby with his first popsicle. The doctor said we should give him frozen breast milk for his teeth. In the comments, Cutie Bo Booty says, the mother-in-law acting like OP should have inherently known that men are creepy about breast milk is some missing stare self-denial bullshit. She doesn't want to admit that her husband is a frickin' pervy creep. Especially the part where father-in-law had to change jobs. Like, ew, that's not normal at all. It's proof that he can't control himself. 
If it had just been the muffin boundary that father-in-law blew through, then changing the locks might have been a bit paranoid, but with documented harassment to the point of losing his job? Yeah, this dude cannot be trusted. You know he violated that poor co-worker's privacy many times for it to get to that point. Quote, it's proof that he can't control himself. Is it though? Or is it that the consequences weren't that bothersome to him? At that point, he still has a wife who thinks it's her responsibility to prevent him, his family, and he has a different job. I personally feel that there are very few people who actually cannot control themselves, but a lot of people who either do not care about the consequences, are selfish, think they won't get caught, or convince themselves they aren't the problem, or just decide that the risk is worth taking, and so on. There's actually a really good section on that in the Why Does He Do That book. If I remember correctly, the author, who works with male abusers, noticed a pattern where, like, the guy who says he loses control and breaks things usually broke his partner's stuff and not his own. After working with a lot of these guys, he came to the conclusion that it's more about giving themselves permission to act out rather than legit being unable to control themselves. 666 Lady says... I find the mother-in-law trying to brush this off like it's normal behavior to be so gross. It'd be one thing if the mother-in-law and father-in-law had had a mutual kink years ago, but creeping on your daughter-in-law, that is just so nasty. That bothers me. What also bothers me is that some people on her original post trying to pretend as if she was doing something weird. It's literally milk for the baby. If you want to use it to make popsicles or muffins for the baby, then that's fine because it's freaking for the baby. I don't understand the weird puritanical shit that some people on Reddit try and pretend is normal, as if those dirty mother effers aren't constantly on the not safe for work subreddits. Damn, I love a bit of mutual yelling to start the morning, don't you? <laughs> I feel as though I stand corrected in this one. That guy's a creep, deserves to be outed for being a creep, has a creepy past. And if it were me in this situation, I'd probably go extremely low contact, if not no contact, because to me, mother-in-law seems delusional and is enabling his behavior and is forgiving it. That's very weird. Anyway, what do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Joey Lee B. Cool, titled, Am I the asshole for telling my housemate to tell his girlfriend to shut the hell up? I, 23 male, am renting a house with three other guys. One of the housemates regularly has his girlfriend, 21 female, over. Outside of the issue at hand, she is fun, is a creative cook, and seems to be very caring. From what I've gathered, she has a difficult home situation, which is why I think she bunked at our place three to four nights out of the week. This housemate works remotely, and I work day shift. Everyone else works night shift, so it's usually just me, the housemate, and his girlfriend home at night, so I don't think the others know that this has been happening. His girlfriend has anxiety. This results in what I think are panic attacks that last for hours, and they always happen after midnight. Crying, sometimes screaming, sometimes stomping around the house, pounding on walls. The first several nights it happened, I asked if there was any way that I could help, but there isn't. I've tried headphones, melatonin, anything to help myself sleep through the screaming, crying, and raging. It happens two to four nights a week and has been going on for two months now. I'm honestly beginning to struggle at work because I'm so unbelievably tired some days. I fell asleep in my car, parked at the house after work, last week, unintentionally. My stomach is a mess because I'm pounding coffee and energy shots. One night last week I slept in the concrete basement because it was quieter. Last night, she went from 12am to 4am. At that point, I had already been awake going on 48 hours, not entirely due to her, as I had to take my mother to the hospital unexpectedly the night before. I couldn't think straight and was starting to feel physically ill from exhaustion. I texted my housemate and said, take her to the hospital for help or tell her to shut the hell up because I can't sleep and I have to be at work in 3 hours. I am not proud of my wording and I did apologize. His response was, she'll be done soon, quit being an insensitive prick. And he also told the other housemates in our group chat that I was being oppressive to his girlfriend while she is struggling. The others are not sure who the asshole is in this situation, me for how I worded my text, or him for calling me an asshole for it, or how to address it. She needs help and I need sleep, so I understand the dilemma, but am I the asshole? 
Not gonna lie, I'm on your side for this one. I don't care that the wording was harsh. You've been awake for 48 hours and she continues to run rampant in your house. I'm surprised you managed to put up with the first incident and the second one and so forth. Because if it were me, I would not deal with that. As soon as it starts disturbing my life and my sleep, I take that as a serious threat. Cops would be called, those people would be evicted from the house because that is not happening. Him excusing this and enabling her just makes this worse and he turned it on OP for just trying to have some peace and quiet. Absolutely not. Not the asshole for this one, OP. Screw those people. In the comments, OP says, I agree my wording was harsh. Still not great of me, but this was not expected or said directly to her. I don't want to add to their already hellish situation, but I need sleep. Have a conversation about getting her help. OP replies, I've tried asking her what we could do to help her, but I also don't want to make her feel any more vulnerable than I'm sure she already does. When she's calm, I try not to bring up her episodes out of fear of triggering one. I've told her I noticed some nights are hard for her and asked if there is anything I can do to help, but she said no. I gathered that she felt uncomfortable discussing it, so left it at that. Are you guys getting noise complaints? Thankfully, no. We live in an area where most of the houses are spread out. No noise complaints, yet. Is it possible that your roommate is hurting her? The first two nights that it happened, I hung around their door because it honestly sounded like she was in trouble, but no, he's not doing anything to her I don't think. Does she sleep during the day? He sleeps during the day except for his few remote hours. Amazingly, she works. I've dropped her off at her job a couple of times since we work close together. I was trying to be more empathetic since she's probably even more exhausted than I am, but then I lost my cool a bit. What do your other roommates think? I honestly think they were only here for one, maybe two of her first episodes, and they were short ones. Enough to make them go WTF, but not enough for them to really say anything. Northeast Northwest says, Not the asshole. This is way beyond just let her be territory. This is serious mental illness and needs to be addressed, and no one in that living situation can do that. You have a right to a healthy life too, especially as you're paying rent and she isn't. She needs a psych eval ASAP. It can take a ton of different forms, but I swear one of the most common sources of contention among millennials and Gen Z boils down to, I live with my roommates and my roommate's partner has quietly turned into a part-time roommate, now my home life is interrupted. If you're going to have your significant other stay over more than a few times a month, you have to be communicative and considerate of the other people who pay money to live there. Not the asshole, and honestly it sounds more like she's using panic attacks as an excuse, and her boyfriend is letting her get away with that kind of behavior. Don't get me wrong, panic attacks can suck, but from what you've said in this post, they don't generally happen that frequently and that severe, and if they do, the person needs to seek help and treatment, especially considering they are living with other people in the same house. Both he and his girlfriend are being extremely disrespectful. Yup. She's using that as manipulation somehow. Panic attacks do suck, but the fact that you can practically set your watch by them seems to suggest that she's taking this and just having a meltdown for whatever manipulative slash abusive reason. I don't think she's using it as manipulation, but I'd bet that whatever scarred her probably happened when an adult came home from a second shift job. She needs help, more than OP or his roomie can give her. If she can't live at home, she needs to get some sort of emergency housing, this is social worker slash crisis territory. Empathy is the right path here, but not to your own detriment, OP. I also wouldn't videotape her without her permission or send it to anyone. You never know who will pass it along and where it will end up. If she's having some sort of episode or PTSD, the last thing she needs is to see a video of herself on the internet for the lulls down the line. And now onto the update. Whoa, thank you for all of your thoughts. Even the you're the asshole votes are giving me a lot to think on. Unfortunately, I have now come down with the stomach bug that my parents had, so I slept on and off through the afternoon and evening. I texted the housemate individually and said I really need the girlfriend to not be here tonight, being sick AF as I am. They both showed up maybe two hours after I messaged him. I will say she was very kind and made some soup from scratch and left some ginger ale at my door. She said she'd be leaving soon, so I assume he told her about my message. 
It's going on 11.30 here, and I can still hear them downstairs, so I'm not hopeful. I'm gonna get through this god-awful sickness before I decide for sure how to address it. I just hope this is one of her quiet nights if she does stay over. Regardless, I don't have it in me for a conversation tonight. I'm posting this on my profile. The Am I the Asshole mods denied this update on their sub, which is fine. She had another long fit last night. For two hours, there was a lot of screaming and crying. Per some of your suggestions, I recorded some of it from my room at different intervals. I sent it to the housemate group chat with the following message. This is what I'm hearing night after night. It keeps me awake, and at this point, I feel like complete garbage every day because I can't sleep. Can we address this tomorrow before I complain to the landlord? Well, the housemate didn't take too kindly to that, and we had an argument at 3am. He once again said I was an unsympathetic asshole. He claimed to be good friends with the landlord, and threatened to have my tenancy terminated if I complained. When I brought up the fact that I pay rent and she doesn't, he said that she's been paying rent to him, which he then adds to his payment to the landlord. I let it go because I was too damn tired to be carrying on an argument. This morning I had a conversation with a girlfriend. She said the episodes are triggered by medication she uses to treat some sleep disorders and mental health concerns, and she is partially aware of the episodes occurring. She expressed why it's important for her to stay in a less toxic environment than her home, but I also tried to explain how badly this is impacting me. She and I are at an impasse. We both sympathize with the other, but we don't want to budge on our stances. Then the housemate blew up because she and I had talked about it. At this point, the other guys were home too, and it was honestly a chaotic mess of everyone talking and shouting over each other. I still have a headache from it. The landlord is supposed to be coming to inspect some maintenance issues later this week, and I am going to tell him everything while he is here. The housemate is calling me an asshole because the complaint might result in her having to stay at her place. Odd, because I thought he was good friends with a landlord, which is not a good environment for her emotionally. Surprisingly, the other housemates are also saying I'm the asshole because they're afraid that this will put them in jeopardy. I think their opinions would be different if they actually went through it while they were trying to sleep during the day. At this point, I'm just going to try to sleep and pack because I don't see this ending well. In the comments, I really don't think what OP said to the roommates was all that bad. If her medication is doing this, then she needs to be in a hospital, and she doesn't remember. She's having some sleep disorder that needs more focus and attention that a sleep clinic can provide, but that's not OP's responsibility. I would have stopped it after the second time. I would look up the local laws and see if she is in any violation or just anything to get out of the lease. And I would tell the landlord that I can break the lease if the living conditions are uninhabitable and having someone scream and bang walls for four to six hours a night is not a habitable living condition and send him multiple videos that this is a recurring issue and report it multiple times. See ya! If the girlfriend wants to live there, she can pay OP's portion of the rent when he moves out, because no one else is going to sign up for this. I would have been a lot ruder and been like, I pay rent and I'm on the lease, she can pay you whatever, that's between the two of you, but she is not on the lease. Leaseholders are the only ones who get an equal say about guests, and she is not welcome. Then say to go to her place. She can bang on her own walls and keep boyfriend up. She stays there three to four nights a week. That makes her an additional tenant that is not on the lease. That's a violation of just about every lease that I know of. That part made me even more angry. She's paying you, so you pay less in rent than the lease agreement that we made between us tenants, and I'm paying the same amount to share a house with an additional tenant? I'd be pissed to find that out even if she wasn't banging on the walls and screaming for hours a night. Also, I agree that the first text was kind of just the facts, besides shut the hell up. She needs help. I need sleep. I was shocked that anyone was saying you're the asshole. The only reason the roommates were split was because it wasn't affecting them at all, so they didn't want to get involved. Her apartment is a bad place for her emotionally, so it's fine for her to make someone else's home hell for them. What? She and her boyfriend should find somewhere else to live, and she should see someone to get a better and different medication. She can't make her problem everybody else's problem. She's probably had so many noise complaints that she's on the verge of getting kicked out, so she's terrorizing OP instead. 
I feel like the only place for her right now is a sleep clinic or, you know, a cabin in the wood. Man, if the other guys think he's being an asshole, then they should trade rooms with him. It's just the time. The other two guys work night shifts, so they don't care. Exactly. Since when does she, who doesn't live there, have more rights over someone who does? She is very selfish, dumping her problems on OP. Also, some leases have rules on how long overnight guests can stay. If there is one, it's highly likely that they are in breach of it. Also, OP's roommate who claims she gives him money for the rent is taking the piss, because if he is telling the truth, he's pocketing the difference, because she's using all the facilities, but he's not paying extra for it. She needs help, but not at the expense of other people's health. She needs to find a place of her own where she's not disturbing anyone. Posted by user Charming Educator 612 titled, I accidentally caused a war between my family and my brother's wife's family with one innocent text message. So my brother's wedding happened two days ago, and it turned into complete chaos, which I didn't even know because I wasn't there. You might wonder why I didn't attend the wedding if it's my brother's. Well, it's because of his wife's family. He did send me an invitation to the wedding because he wanted me to be there, but his fiance told him that I couldn't attend because I had a boyfriend. You might be confused, but I'm a man, a bisexual man to be exact, and I have a boyfriend who I wanted to bring to the wedding. She said even though she doesn't have a problem with that, and he doesn't have a problem with that, her extremely religious parents who already forced her to do the wedding in a church would most likely banish us from the wedding and cause trouble between our families. After she told him that my brother told me I couldn't attend and told me why, you might think that I was angry, but the truth is that I was relieved. I hate going to big events with lots of people because of my social anxiety, and I already was used to not being able to attend certain events because of my sexuality, so it was nothing that I haven't heard before. So the day of the wedding, I stayed at home with my boyfriend. It's worth mentioning my parents apparently didn't know that I wasn't attending the wedding, I was just chilling at home cuddling with my boyfriend when I suddenly got a text message from my parents asking me where I was because they couldn't find me at the wedding. I told them that I wasn't attending the wedding and asked if my brother had told them anything. They said no and asked me what happened. I didn't see any reason to lie, so I sent them a text message telling them exactly why. Now I have to admit I don't exactly know what happened after I sent this message because they read it but didn't reply. And why do they care in the first place? They didn't notice I wasn't there before until the wedding was already over. They only noticed when the wedding party started. However, apparently my parents talked to my brother about it, and all of a sudden my absence was the main topic of the wedding party. From what I heard, two fronts formed. On one hand, my parents and the rest of the family against the family of my brother's wife, and apparently he as a husband now felt compelled to take her side and tried to argue in her favor. It's crazy to think that I was just sitting at home living my best life with my boyfriend while all of that shit went down at his wedding. The wedding party was ruined, and my brother appeared on my door angrily screaming at me as to why I felt the need to ruin his wedding. I was confused and asked him what happened, and he told me everything. I told him it wasn't my intention. I just told our parents what happened because they didn't know, and they wanted to know where I was, and I thought that he told them beforehand. He screamed at me that I ruined his wedding. I told him it's not my fault that he wasn't honest with them. I just respected their wish to not attend the wedding. I couldn't know that it wouldn't go down like this because, like I said, I couldn't attend several events before because of my sexuality, and my parents never said anything about that, so I thought that it would just be the same thing here. But I've got to admit that it's kind of sweet that my parents and the rest of my family stood up for me. They haven't done it before. That is a more than welcome change, but I still feel kind of bad because apparently I really ruined the wedding party. I think I get the deal. I think you've said it like five times that you ruined the wedding party. You say it enough times you might convince yourself that that's the truth, but no, that's not the truth in this situation. It's very obvious that your brother is a dickhead and the wife's family is a bunch of dickheads. Ostracizing you based solely on your sexuality is inexcusable, and it's not something that you should have to accept. But unfortunately, it's your reality, it's what your family has accepted, and it's what your brother has enabled. I'm sorry that that's the case, but it's not your fault. This situation is simply not your fault. That's really all I have to say about this. In the comments...
Your mum underscore infinity says, You didn't do anything. You just explained the situation. Every action following that was a grown-ass adult choosing their own actions. And the snowball effect landed a big-ass golden egg right on his lap as it passed by to run the wedding over. <laughs> Lamal? OP's brother is so stupid not to even realize that his wife ruined the wedding the second she told him his brother wasn't welcome. But he comes and screams at his brother. What a pathetic mess of a person. Seriously, it was clear that it was going to go nuts the moment that I read that part. It's not your job to hide the shitty things that he does. It's his job to not do shitty things. And apparently his brother didn't even ask him to keep it a secret from his parents. OP is literally being blamed for not being a psychic. Sounds like my mother. The amount of times I got in shit for not keeping something secret when I didn't even know they needed to be secret is ridiculous. You didn't ruin the party though, did you, OP? You didn't turn up anyway and make a huge scene because you weren't allowed to bring the plus one of your choice. You were told that you couldn't attend and why you didn't attend. The issue is with everyone else who, in 2023, still has problems with stuff like who likes who. Well done to your parents for standing up to you. Some of us should be so lucky. OP definitely didn't ruin the party. The bride and her shitty family did by making sure he wasn't invited over nonsense reasons. It's really amazing how allergic some people are about accepting blame for their actions, isn't it? I have a gay son, and I would scorch the earth if anyone tried to leave him out of a family event or anything else because of his sexuality. I'd be really ashamed of my other kids if they let their partners do this. And now, onto the update. I didn't think I'd give an update, but many interesting things happened. So after my brother's visit, his wife and him went on honeymoon, and the way the wedding party went might have been even worse than I imagined. What happens now is incredible. When I said in the main post that two fronts had formed, I only meant that metaphorically, of course. But it's no longer that. While nothing much interesting happened in the first two days afterwards, the terror started as soon as my brother and his wife went on their honeymoon. My mom and my dad visited me and told me how the wedding party escalated and they were so close to physical violence. I thought it was funny at first, but this truly bothers me. I also want to point out that you did a great job at convincing me that it's not my fault, but hearing my parents' side still gave me a bad feeling in my stomach. However, like I said, the terror started shortly after they went to their honeymoon. And when I say terror, I mean that my sister-in-law's family found both my Facebook and Instagram accounts and started spamming me with hateful messages. I received insults and hateful messages from various different accounts who all had one thing in common. They all had somewhat of a Christian theme, and all of them had the same last name, so it wasn't hard to find out whose account it was, mainly because I don't know my sister-in-law's family at all. I only know her, and I know her parents were homophobic Christians. But whatever. They not only started attacking me, they also found the account of my boyfriend over my account because we are linked as a couple and started to send him the same messages. The messages contained on one side typical bigot stuff like, you're burning in hell for all your sins. One even called me and my boyfriend two devils in disguise. The other sides were just blatant insults. You get the idea. I called my parents and told them what they were doing. Then I sent a text message to my brother and screenshots of the messages his wife's family sent me, to which he replied that I shouldn't disturb him with that during his honeymoon as I already destroyed his wedding party. I couldn't believe it. He was just like them. He did send me an apology after my mother told me that she called him, but none of this is the main reason I'm giving you this update this early. Because I got a call this morning from an unknown number. I hesitated because I thought that it was one of them, and I was right, but it was none of the people who insulted me. I heard a woman's voice who introduced herself as the half-sister of my brother's wife. She said that it didn't go unnoticed what her family was doing, and she wanted to apologize for them. I told her that I'm not going to tell anyone in her family about this, and that I don't blame her for her family's actions. She thanked me and hung up. I don't know why, but I have this feeling she only did this to protect her family from being reported. My mother wrote to me earlier that she wants to report the insults and the harassment to these people, and that she demands for my brother to divorce his wife, or she will disinherit him from her will, because that's not how she raised him. A little radical in my opinion, but I understand where she's coming from. The entire thing escalated so much, it's unbelievable. Thank y'all you for your support on my first post. In the comments, Misty Mountain Time says, 
Can't wait for the next update. Let your mom be mama bear. You two really could be in danger given how these people are acting. Your brother needs a serious wake up call. Stay safe, OP. I'd start keeping some pepper spray on you. As a mama bear, her actions are justified. My son is right next to me and I know for a fact I would disown him if he did any of this shit. As much as it would break my heart. OP's brother has shown his true colors and I bet she is devastated. This is honestly my biggest fear at the thought of becoming a parent. What if my kid sucks? What if they suck so much they're like these people and hateful toward people I love? It'd be the greatest shame of my life to put more nasty assholes into the world. Can you report them on Facebook and Instagram? I keep screenshots of everything and document it in case you need to have to file harassment charges down the line. I would even keep that phone number from the apologetic caller. Yes, take screenshots and block and report them right after. No! Don't block and don't report on social media. Gather evidence, maybe ask once to stop the hate spamming, and then cease any and all responses, but keep everything and gather your ammunition. Edited to add, your brother chose this woman, and by default, her family. You were quite literally just existing and living your best life when all of this unfolded. You did not choose this. Please, do not allow your brother or his bridezilla to flip this on you in any way. You are still not guilty for any of this. Sister-in-law's family are angry about a group of people existing. That's a them problem. They choose to be angry, they choose to be hateful, and they choose to attack you for who you are. Just keep being you. I would indeed document all the messages you get and whom you get those from in case you need to report them. But how is reporting them for harassment going to out this half-sister? Not like the reporting of harassment will do anything anyway. Honestly, this family can all rot. I'd take the screenshots of every message they sent and blast it everywhere. Oh, and your brother can also rot, since he's chosen this family over yours. And OP replies, I meant that I think she might only have apologized for her family because she already knew that us reporting the harassment might happen. And now onto a final update of sorts, titled, Why am I so casual about this entire situation? Some of you were wondering why I seem so calm and casual in the update when I'm discriminated against. The truth is that I'm in a relationship with my boyfriend for three years now, and the things that happen now are nothing compared to what I have been through. I receive hateful messages almost daily, not only from their accounts, but just in general, and I've learned to ignore that. There have been way worse situations, such as when my boyfriend went to visit his family and I couldn't go with him. We kissed each other goodbye at the train station, and when the train left and no one saw it, a group of guys attacked me. I was sent to hospital because of severe injuries. Just to give you an idea of what I've had to deal with in the past. And don't get me wrong, we will still report my sister-in-law's family, but what they are doing is nothing that I haven't seen a thousand times before. In the comments, Portacures says, I am so sorry about you being attacked. When my child told me that they were gay, they thought that I would not care for them. They were so wrong. I love them with all my heart. My biggest fear has always been them being attacked by those who think they have the right to due to their ignorance and self-righteousness. You did nothing wrong. Your brother should not make you feel like it is your fault. Like you, I would have thought that he'd mentioned to your parents that you were not going to his wedding. It seems to me that there was already some animosity going on, and this was the drop that spilled the cup. Have fun with your boyfriend, and I agree that you should report their harassment. I look forward to any future updates. And yeah, OP, that is so entirely rough that you've had to deal with all of this. I am beyond apologetic that people are such pieces of shit to you. I'm grateful that you've managed to persevere in the face of all this animosity, and you have such an positive outlook on life after all of that. I genuinely can't imagine how much hate you receive and how much you have been through, and I'm sorry that people are like that to you. Just want to state again that none of this is your fault. You deserve only the best, because from what you've said, it has been rough, and I hope that things are better in the future, and I look forward to more updates. Anyway guys, what do you think of this one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by throwaway535567, titled, Am I the asshole for not wanting to celebrate my brother's recovery because he was driving while drunk? 
I, 19 female, have a brother, 21 male, who has been spoiled rotten. He gets away with anything. He doesn't listen or take orders from anybody, and my parents don't seem to care about his attitude. There has been many fights about this. My brother was driving under the influence and crashed into two cars on the highway. He was in the hospital for a good while. I don't remember exactly how long. Everyone was worried about his condition, and each day just has been non-stop worrying about whether he was going to be okay. There's been a couple of fights, because my parents said the incident didn't matter too much as long as the people involved in the crash didn't die. I couldn't believe it. Well, he was able to recover, and my parents wanted to throw a party to celebrate his recovery. I was happy he was okay, but I have no sympathy for drunk drivers. My childhood friend died from a drunk driving accident, and I had to go into therapy. I had a problem with this because it felt like they didn't care that two people got hit. I voiced this opinion, and I got crucified, basically. My parents said that I was a bad sister for not being happy for my brother. I said I was happy, but it's like they didn't even care, and the reason he's allowed to get away with shit like this is because they keep filling his thick head with delusions. I'll admit, I got a tiny bit emotional because I remembered my friend's death, so I just went to my room and slammed the door. My dad came banging on my door yelling, I HOPE YOU'RE EFFING HAPPY! I deeply regret even saying anything now, but am I wrong for thinking it's weird and disrespectful that they don't even care about this situation just because nobody died and not wanting to celebrate my brother? Edit, by recovery, I mean in terms of injuries. Second edit, as far as I know, my brother has been charged. I'm currently on the way to my boyfriend's house now because I can't stand my family. I can see why you regret saying what you said, but I don't think that you're wrong for thinking it's weird and disrespectful that they don't care about this situation. There's no excuse for drunk driving. We as a society should be entirely intolerant to that idea. I don't think that it should ever be acceptable. I don't understand the delusion of these parents. We are not going to celebrate your brother, are you crazy? Why in any universe would we celebrate what he's achieved here today? He will not learn his lesson. He will drink drive again. He will kill innocent people, tear innocent families apart. I don't blame you at all for what you're saying. I don't think you should regret what you have said to your parents. Your dad is an asshole for coming after you like that. Not the asshole. In the comments, Winter Lily says, Absolutely not the asshole. I am disgusted with your parents especially, since they have to have known about the circumstances of your friend's death, and they should understand why you feel the way you do about this. Right? The words my mother used when discussing drunk driving with me as a teenager were, If you ever get a DUI, do yourself a favor and don't call me. You'll be safer in jail than out on bail. <laughs> That's like a Better Call Saul <laughs> jingle. Safer in jail than out on bail. I have multiple relatives who have lost licenses for drink driving, and I cannot for the life of me understand why it's not a bigger deal than it is. Let alone why my mum and some other relatives actually go out of their ways to help the drunk drivers get groceries and similar stuff that's harder to do now without a car. In my opinion, if they didn't care enough about other people's lives to find a safer way or means of transport than drunk driving, why should anyone else care to help them avoid the inconvenience of taking the bus or simply just walking? Like, I realize they all grew up in an extremely traumatic setting and the drunk drivers of the group are definitely alcoholics, but that doesn't excuse shit in my eyes though. I've never said anything against that, because it's not my circus, not my monkeys, why start shit when it doesn't directly concern me, but it's not a dynamic that I want anything to do with. Valley of Sound says, Drunk driving is like picking up a gun that you're pretty sure is empty and just firing it at someone. Most of the time, nothing serious happens, but in rare cases, there is an accident that seriously injures or kills someone. I used to think that driving under the influence should be treated more like attempted murder than a traffic violation, and I suppose I've mellowed out since then. But still, I completely agree with you that it needs to be a bigger deal than it is now because of the sheer risks someone takes when driving drunk. Not the asshole, but I would have attended and gave him a toast. To my brother, the drunk, who nearly killed two people, and himself. Oh, and uh, make sure to include the enablers, <laughs> I mean... Parents. Here's to the dangerous drunk and the reasons 
eye contact with parents, he drinks. Not the asshole. they're too far gone. If I were you, I would focus on establishing a life away from them and their delusional world. And now, onto the update. I had to make a new account because something went wrong. I just wanted to write this update because lots happened overnight. My boyfriend's family is allowing me to stay with them for a while because my family is absolutely unhinged. My dad decided to show up to my boyfriend's house and cause a scene. I guess my little tantrum worked because he announced that they're not having the party anymore. He also said my brother hates me now, which I don't really care. He has also been charged for those who don't know. An argument started and it was basically like the argument that took place before. He kept saying I wasn't happy for my brother and I said for the millionth time, I was happy that he came out fine in the end, but celebrating it and enabling his behavior is not okay. It was absolutely embarrassing because this was at my boyfriend's house, in front of his entire family, and they were trying to calm us down. As you guys know, I wrote it in my post, my best friend since we were toddlers passed away at the hands of a drunk driver a day after she turned 19. That effed me up so bad, to the point where I had to go to therapy for some time, and considering that next month will be a year since her passing, this entire situation has hurt me. When I brought this up to my dad, he said, I'm sorry about that, but if it's almost a year, you should just be over it by now. I just told him that I'll go back to get my things and leave, because they obviously didn't care about how I felt. I'm back at my boyfriend's house now, and they've been comforting me. Nothing hurt me more than my dad telling me to just get over my friend's death, because I've known her for my whole life. Anyway, this is just how things are so far. I blocked my parents and my brother on everything. Now that I've calmed down a bit and I have tons of support, I feel a little bit relieved. June 18th would have been her 20th birthday, and June 19th will be a year since some heartless monster took her life away, so I'm making both days all about her, even though she's not physically here with me. Thanks everyone for the amazing replies. I couldn't reply, shake my head. I sympathize with everyone who has lost a loved one or gotten injured because of some idiots who think it's acceptable to drink and drive. I love all of you, and I know my friend is rooting for me from above. In the comments, Sheep King says, Less than a year and you should be over it? Are you effing serious? I'm never not going to be upset about his passing when I think about my brother, and I'm deep in my 40s. He passed two years ago, and I know a lot of people who have lost someone as close as you were to your friend. Some of them lost that someone decades ago, and it still hurts when they think of them. You will move on from it, but it's probably always going to hurt, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's completely normal. I'm sorry about your family. It's seriously effed up when people, especially parents, enable addiction instead of intervening to help and to have the gall to come to your boyfriend's house to yell at you is all kinds of unhinged. Just Gay Garbage says, I had a friend pass away when I was 10. It was my first experience with death and forced me to recognize my mortality. May 26th was the anniversary of her death, and I still go down to the bench we put up for her memorial every year. It's been many more years than one. OP replies, When you were 10? Oh no, I'm sorry. That's a beautiful way to remember her. She's smiling down on you. Ever since my friend died, I would go to her grave whenever I was sad or had time, and my boyfriend would come sometimes too. It was just heart-wrenching. I remember I almost fainted at her funeral because it hurt too bad. I love to talk about my friend because she did nothing but lift everyone up. She had all these funny sayings and this crazy laugh, but although we shared other close friends, me and her were inseparable. I thank God every day that I got to spend time with her on her last day, her birthday. I am so sorry about your friend, and I think it's lovely that you're planning to honor her. Did your brother's accident happen after her death? If so, that is somehow even more egregious to me. And OP replies, yes, it did. And it's the fact that none of them care to realize how bad it really is. That's why I'm heartbroken. It's just so insensitive. I'm so sorry that your family is acting this way. Soak up the love from your boyfriend's family. Everyone grieves differently. I've lost many people in my life. Some losses have taken years. You take all the time you need to heal. Just as long as you're not dwelling on it, you're fine. I'm so glad that you have your boyfriend and his family to support you. 
I'm thankful that your brother is being charged. Hopefully he will have consequences and maybe even learn from them. And OP replies, I'm glad too. Sometimes I feel like I'm just a burden on my boyfriend's family, but they don't care and have been treating me like the family that I deserve to have. Each day still feels painful, but my friend wouldn't want me to cry every day knowing that she's at peace. You are not a burden, OP. You're just recharging your batteries and processing some serious shit. Take things slowly and think about your next steps. Don't take your family's emotional shit. Reach out to people who you can trust to give you some emotional support and advice. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. They are some absolutely insufferable, terrible people, that family that OP has to deal with. I'm still shocked. I'm still blown away at how terrible all of them are. Even after seeing OP grieve and lose someone as close to her as her friend, they refuse to acknowledge that drink driving bad, don't drink drive, don't enable drink driver. They don't see that. They continue to enable him and celebrate him. It just baffles the mind, doesn't it? Posted by user Throw RA Bunker Man, titled Am I the asshole for spending a lot of time in my bunker away from my family? My grandfather was an incredibly talented man who also suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and he was convinced that the nuclear apocalypse was going to end the human race at some point. So he built his own bunker and then buried the entrance because he was now convinced that both the KGB and the CIA were watching him and wanted to keep the bunker a secret. Yes, he was a crazy man. My dad inherited his house, but he never lived there. So when I had my first child in 2018 and got married in 2019, my dad made me an incredibly generous offer for the house. For reference, I've bought computers that were more expensive than the house. The bunker became kind of an urban legend, mostly because my old grandpa used to tell a lot of crazy stories, but out of curiosity, I went looking for it and found the entrance. The old man really did it. So, thanks to being stuck at home during the uneventful 2020 and 2021, I started remodeling the bunker to look less like a fallout vault and more like my own man cave. Everyone loves it, especially the kids. Those kids being my nephews and my friends' children. So, the house is decorated to my wife's taste while I can do whatever I want in the bunker. Play gaming, fix computers, set up a whole home server, work from home, etc. However, lately she's been complaining about me being distant and spending a lot of time there and less time with her and our child. She's pregnant again, so she said she was worried, but I just promised to spend more time at the house. After a few weeks, that wasn't enough for her and she accuses me of abandoning her. I'm asking for judgement here because I'm trying to be there for my family, but this bunker feels like it's the only thing that's really mine and where I can actually have a break. But my wife has said she's going to seal the entrance, otherwise I might miss the birth and not even notice. Should I just move all my stuff into the house and forget about it? Am I really being neglectful or is it just her pregnancy hormones talking? To be clear, I do help with the house chores and spend time with my son when I'm there and I have an intercom in the bunker so my wife can just call me if she needs anything and I'll go up there immediately. Edit to add, everyone is asking me this. I spend at least six hours at the bunker on weekdays. I work there so I think it's reasonable and at least four hours on the weekends. But yeah, you're right, I need to make arrangements. I forgot to mention, our son goes to kindergarten so my wife has time to work and sometimes be alone at home. Edit to add two, guys, I'm taking notes. I'm just trying to understand what I should change about myself and how to talk to my wife about this. Remember that I spend at least six working, not just scratching my belly. My manager allows me to log out early if I finish my work for the day, but I can't log out if I've been working for less than six hours. I also spend time talking with my team on Slack. Edit to add three, so many of you are picking up on my language. I would appreciate it if you calmly explain why my choice of words is so bad so I don't screw things up when I speak to my wife. More about the bunker. The entrance is like 900 feet away from the house. There was also a tunnel connecting it to a hidden place in the basement, but it collapsed I don't know how many years ago, so we sealed it. Yes, the city inspected it and is okay. I didn't bother with the tunnel because it seems to be badly built and there was a risk that it could keep collapsing if we tried to fix it. We also had to add more columns and reinforcements to make sure it won't collapse. 
I was recommended to have yearly inspections. Just to clarify, you say work and game? Are you doing those at the same time? OP says, No bro, when I mean working, I mean having a fight with my IDE until shit works, and when I mean networking, I mean talking to my team on Slack. Speaking to your team is as important as doing the work itself, also can be spent reading documents. Then after finishing, I can game for like an hour before going up. And yeah, I see how bad it sounds. Sometimes it can be two hours, but hear me out. I usually don't play online games, but single player games with a linear story and clear objectives. So it's easy to do the till the next checkpoint, though modern games can be saved at whatever point and log out. Yes, I think I should stop doing this or do it inside the house. Where did you work before you had the bunker? And OP says, Before getting married, I just went to the office every day, but had my main computer in the bedroom. When we first moved into this house, I got a room to place my computers. During the time, yes, had more contact with my family, but it was harder to make it feel like an office. The man, he yearns. He yearns for the bunker. He yearns for the mines. In my point of view, this does seem like it's a situation where you are going to come to an ends with your wife. You're going to be at ends with her. Let's just hope that doesn't spiral to the end of your relationship, the end of your marriage. That wouldn't be good. I see it as a huge positive that you're coming to Reddit and asking for advice on how you can approach this situation because it seems as though there's been a lot of damage done between you two. I don't see anything wrong with the time you spend in there working, but perhaps you could incorporate more family time in different areas where you're not in the bunker by yourself. But at the same time, I, I do understand your need for alone time. It just seems that this alone time has been playing on your wife's mind too much, and it seems to be an unacceptable form of that. You both need to compromise on something, but as it stands, I'm on your wife's side more, so I think you're the asshole in this situation. In the comments, Illustrious Shirt says, You're the asshole. Where is your wife's bunker equivalent, and how many hours per week does she get in that space versus you in your bunker? Way to go putting 100% of the mental load on your wife in no uncertain terms. Added to add, it's absolutely valid for OP to spend his work hours in the bunker. I believe the problems of balance exist outside the working hours. Exactly this. And why doesn't your wife also get a space for herself to disappear for hours on end? And to add to that, it sounds like OP alienated himself with his bunker. He made it his man cave right off the bat, then made the separation even more so by saying, this is my space to decorate how I like, and my wife gets to decorate the house. Shake my head, you're the asshole. And then complains that there's no space that represents him in his house? Yeah dude, that was by your arrangement. You're the asshole. Comfortable fun replies to that, what do you mean? He said, so the house is decorated to my wife's taste, while I can do whatever I want in the bunker. It seems as though he's saying that they each have their own taste represented, just in different ways and styles. It was quite the opposite that I took from his comments. More of just, this is the way it is, but I prefer it this kind of way situation. But the reason I replied to your comment was that I wanted to ask, where do you see this complaint he is saying that he is upset over there being no space that represents him in the house? Good question. Touchgrass Redditor says, You're the asshole. Not for spending time in the bunker, as that sounds so freaking cool, I would also be in there all the time, but for considering ignoring your wife who is pretty directly telling you that you aren't spending enough time with your family and being distant. You started a family, dude. It's not all about you anymore. I have a family friend who started a side business moving the neighbor's lawns. Rate is very fair, most neighbors have hired him, he spends 3 or 4 hours on a Saturday riding on his mower, chatting it up with the neighbors. It's a side business that helps pay for the kids' activities, but it's also his bunker. It's genius. He turned his me time into something that's good for the family along with himself. Opie's doing something that's good for himself, but at the expense of his family. Do you even like your wife, OP? I'm pretty done with men claiming to be active parents when really, the bare minimum is being done. And on top of that, you want praise for helping out when home. OP, you're the asshole. Your wife is pregnant and you're relying on her to take the full mental load at home while you get away time? Do you not see how insanely selfish that is? Especially in comparison to everything she's going through. Please grow up. Your wife and kids deserve a lot more than an absentee father slash husband. 
There's a reason why like 75% of the adult women I know consider being a gamer to be an absolute deal breaker. There is a finite amount of time in one's day, week, and life, and the choice to spend so much of it on something that is ultimately meaningless is just not what we're looking for in a partner. OP is choosing his bunker time with his sweet computer setup over quality time with his family. It's genuinely sad. And back up to the post, we have a mini update. I had a talk with my wife. Overall, I think it went well since she told me everything, but there are so many raw emotions right now, and I was sent to sleep in the spare room. She had no mercy on me, but we needed this talk so we can have a clear path for our future together. And now, on to the update. I talked to my wife. I asked her to be very honest, and I promised to let her talk until she was done. First of all, it's not just about the time that I spent in the bunker now, but she felt completely alone taking care of our little baby while I spent almost all of my free time remodeling and building, and when it's done, I'm just down there. I explained to her that it was basically my office now. She understood and apologized, and then continued to explain herself. I'll just quote the gist of it because we talked for hours. I haven't been my own person since my first pregnancy. I feel like a doll. Every day is the same. I'm bored, frustrated, angry, and just when I thought it might get easier, I get pregnant again. How many years until I can just be me again? You have a big hole underground where you can play and not care about the world. I haven't read a book in years. I can't read two pages without falling asleep. Yes, the house looks nice, but what about a place for me? I don't want a Kindle. I don't want audiobooks to listen to while cooking or driving. I want a physical collection. Where do I put them? When was the last time that I went to a library? When was the last time you gave me something made of real paper? For some context, she has always been a bookworm. She loves books and the aesthetic of just having shelves full of them. But it's true, she hasn't read in a long time. I gave her a Kindle for our anniversary and I pay for her Audible subscription. I thought those would be good substitutes, but they're not. Stop thinking that a screen can solve everything. I need you with me. I married a human, not a sim. Download some emotions. I want to write again, but how? When? Will you read my first crappy drafts or just take a look and say it's okay? Can you have our son in the bunker for a few hours a day? He's bored here. He won't be bored down there. It was hard, but I needed it, and she needed it too. I'm going to move my gaming consoles into the house and see if we can set up Steam Link to stream games from my gaming PC to our TV or something. We agreed to go on dates outside the house, and I'm going to take on more responsibilities around the house. I want to address something. I was told by my parents that I need to help with the house. Help with the kids. But then I come to Reddit and it turns out that helping is a problem. You talked a lot about mental load. This was the first time I heard about it. Who was supposed to teach me that? Helping, not having addictions, being loyal, and always being there seemed like what every good husband does. But now I realize that it was just the bare minimum. I feel like I have to relearn everything, and it's hard to realize that I'm a bad husband and father for thinking that the bare minimum was all I needed to have a long and happy marriage. I became a Reddit villain by being clueless, but I accept that. I'll see you again soon. Thank you all. And now onto the final update, titled, Things Are Getting Better, Update to Bunker Post. Hey guys, I hope you remember me. I'm the Bunker Guy. Not much has happened in terms of big events, but things are getting better. After the talk that I had with my wife, I started taking more responsibility around the house. I've been taking on as much as I can so that she can rest. Except I'm a terrible cook, so I have some frozen and instant food that I just heat up and call it done. But I've been taking our son to school and picking him up, spending more time with him in the bunker, he loves it, and I've been gaming in the living room because I moved my consoles there and successfully set up Steam Link. So overall, my wife is sleeping more and has a few hours to just do nothing. She is much calmer now. She said she loved being able to just chill on the couch and not have to worry about anything. This pregnancy has been rough on her emotions, so I'm glad to see her like this. She also spent some time with me in the bunker, doing her own work, sleeping, or just hanging out. She even got The Sims and started playing again. 
The first thing she did was build an almost exact replica of our house. We also did a lot of cuddling down there, and even had sex. I have to admit, I'm loving every second of this new dynamic, even though there are still a few things that need to be changed and tweaked. I offered to build a room for her in the bunker, but she says it gets a little claustrophobic after a few hours, and she likes the sunlight, so that was declined. Then I suggested building a shed for her. She said nothing, but after a few hours, showed me a shed that she'd built on The Sims. A hexagonal brick structure with a U-shaped couch in the middle, a door and bookshelves on every wall, connected to the main house by a fenced-in path. I think it looks nice, so I'll send it this week to the same people who helped me rebuild the bunker so they can convert it to CAD. Nothing is perfect yet. I have a lot to learn and haven't started couples counselling yet. That'll be in about two weeks, but I am trying my best. I have been an idiot for way too long and have a lot to make up for. Thank you all again. In the comments, Jellybears says, I feel like there's a lot of people in here waxing your dick about how great it is that you stopped being a useless burden to your family because you finally realized that sitting in a bunker pulling your wiener for six hours and maybe getting some money out of it is the absolute bare minimum. And I feel like they don't realize that the gist of your posts has 100% been, how in the world was I supposed to know this common sense thing that my wife has been trying to tell me for months? This isn't a realization you just have. You've known this for months, years perhaps, and exploited it to the point that it almost destroyed your family. I don't think anyone has genuinely been giving you the kick in the head that you actually need. Guaranteed that your wife was not thinking, I married a great man. I am 100% sure that she was thinking instead, thank you for finally getting off your ass and not being a huge effing burden for once. Google the term weaponized incompetence and stop acting like you're a holy saint for hopping off your video games and being a contributing member of your family for once. Come back when this behavior lasts for more than a month. I'm genuinely willing to bet my next paycheck on him going back to being worthless and a burden once the new baby is born. Shia Herazade says, This was a frustrating read in spite of the positive ending because I've seen this happen a lot with married couples. The wife gives birth and is put in charge of the child by default, and the husband builds a sort of bunker in his mind that filters out his awareness of his wife and child's needs. But this time, the bunker was literal, not metaphorical. As a father of two kids under three years old, I will never understand these dads who just think they go sit in a bunker and leave the kid or kids uh, with the wife. My wife and I continuously look at our situation and try to tailor things to make life as equitable as possible. I still think my wife probably does more overall, but if I see a place to lend an extra hand, I try to. But usually it is to get the kids to bed, watch an episode or two of a show with my wife, and then head downstairs for some multiplayer gaming before I go to bed. I'm glad that he worked it out, but I'd hate to be her and have to tell him to be present, especially with a pregnancy. Tell me about it. Note that he mentioned she somehow ended up pregnant, as if he doesn't know where babies come from and didn't play any part in making that baby. How sad that she had to spell out to the father of her child that he also has to parent. And he didn't believe her until Reddit agreed with her either. That's the part that always grinds my gears. He was fully aware that she was exhausted and unhappy. He just valued the opinions of a bunch of strangers on Reddit over the woman that he married. Call me cynical, but I'm struggling to see this as a positive update. The line about who was going to teach him about mental load really stuck out to me. It's still someone else's responsibility to tell him about mental load, which is the exact problem that mental load is about. Nobody taught me about mental load. I found the information and resources myself. I am responsible for being a responsible adult. What my parents teach me is only the start of the journey, and often you have to unlearn what you were taught anyway. Ludra says, It's also crazy that guys claim to not know about it too. They have jobs. They know what has to be done there without their boss checking in and letting them know every single step every single time. They know to look around and see what needs to be done and to do it. It's just around the house where they suddenly have no idea that's even a thing. Yep. I completely agree with everything these people are saying. I know it may come across as like, oh my god, jaded Reddit people, but is it not true? 
Also, I know I was kind of apologizing in a way for OP, I feel like, uh, when I responded to the post. I'm not on OP's side. I do hope that this improvement in his awareness and his involvement in the family continues positively into the future, but there is no guarantee of that. If there is another update, I will be sure to cover it. Anyway guys, what are your thoughts on this one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Throw L Finance, titled, Would I be the asshole if I break up with my fiancé because of his past as a cheater? Trigger warning, miscarriage. I, 25 female, met my fiancé Jamie, 34 male, a year ago through a friend. We instantly clicked and started dating. After one year, he proposed to me, and I said yes, but here's the thing. Before proposing, he told me the truth about his past relationship. He was married to a woman, Cynthia, three years ago, and they divorced because he started cheating on her with a co-worker. He regrets ever doing that. He has been on a healing journey from that. He has told me that the affair was a mistake and that he would never do it again. He just wants to be honest with me before we take this relationship to the next level. I understand what he meant. He is obviously remorseful and I have seen his ex-wife. She seems happier with someone else, and everyone makes mistakes or does things they regret. I trust him and I love him a lot, but I can't shake off this feeling that he would not do this to me. This started when he was being secretive about his phone. He would smile at the screen often. I asked him what it was, and he just showed me his phone, and he was looking at a meme. He probably sensed that I was doubting him, so he let me check his phone. There was nothing in there, but still, I couldn't trust him. A few days after our engagement, he had a work party. He took me to that party as well, and I saw that he was being a bit friendly to some woman. I went there and introduced myself. Later I got to know that she was the same girl that he cheated with. I confronted him about it and he said that he doesn't talk to her. They broke up shortly after their divorce, and he cannot avoid her because he worked with her. I told him that I'm not comfortable with him hanging out with someone who was his mistress. He respected my decision, and as far as I know, he has not contacted her outside of work. I know I have no reason to doubt him. He doesn't give off any signs of infidelity, yet I have a hard time trusting him. He is loving and caring. He supports me and my dreams. He is patient and kind. I know it's unfair of me to judge him based on just that. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine asked me to meet her, and she told me the whole truth about Jamie. She knows Cynthia because she and her brother were college friends. She told me to be careful of Jamie because he cheated on his ex-wife. I told her I already know that. She further told me he started cheating on Cynthia right after she had a miscarriage. He was upset that Cynthia was depressed and he started to feel neglected. After talking to my friend, I confronted Jamie. He told me this was the truth. He was still in grief because he lost his child. He didn't know what he was thinking. He started to feel resentful towards her, but never meant to hurt her. I told him that I needed a break from all of this. It's just too much for me. He said he understands, and I still haven't talked to him. I don't know if I should break up with him just because of this. He does feel guilty about it, but he is really nice and mature. Will I be making a mistake if I break up with him? Edit, I think I should mention that he never said anything about a miscarriage. He just told me they had a tragic accident, which made both of them distant. I didn't ask because he said he doesn't want to talk about it. Also, I'm still not fully sure if he regrets the cheating because he never confessed to cheating to his wife. His wife caught him in the middle of the act inside their house. So this has been a bother that he got caught and probably feels guilty for that. I don't know. I'm getting a lot of missing, missing reasons vibes and him only confessing to things when confronted with the truth, trickle truthing and only expanding on what he knows that you know but never giving you the full story and never being completely open with you about this. I don't know if that's enough for you to warrant breaking off the relationship with him, but it's definitely something to seriously consider going forward. In the comments, Pro Brown Butter says, Don't marry people you have known for a year, especially people who are known cheaters. There is absolutely no reason to rush things if you don't trust him. Slow things way down if you want to try to work things out, but also someone being a cheater is absolutely a valid reason to dump them. Especially when you're 25 with a 9 year age gap. He didn't tell you the whole truth. He told you the part he could most easily put a spin on and made you pry the ugly details out of him when other people sought you out to warn you. 
He may say he'll never cheat again, but he still sees lying by omission and running interference as solutions to his problems. And that should give you massive pause. This is the real meat and potatoes of it. It's one thing to cheat, feel remorseful for it, own up to it fully, swear to never do it again, and keep that promise through your actions. It's quite another to admit to cheating, but trickle truth the rest of the details out by force. If she had just taken his word, she would have unknowingly been hanging around his mistress. That is crazy. He is still in contact with this mistress, red flag. He still works with this mistress, red flag. He never told you the full story about the cheating, red flag. He is not reliable in times of need. He sought another woman whilst his wife was in one of the deepest hells a woman can be in. Ask yourself, if something traumatic happened to you, will he A, be there for you, or B, seek out his own comfort? Let his history guide you and you will see your potential future. You need to step away from this 30-odd-year-old cheating divorcee. He is a red flag. Don't forget, he never told you he still worked with his mistress to begin with. Huge red flag. That is a hell of a lot of baggage for you as a 25-year-old. You wouldn't be an asshole if you left. It doesn't sound like you're on a level playing field, and he doesn't sound like the kind of guy that would adjust to you when times get hard. And OP replies, I fear that I might be next because I have a condition that puts me in a risk of miscarriage. He knows that, but I don't think if we ever have a child and I miscarried, he would go back to his old ways. And now, onto the update. I analyzed all of the things you guys said. Some of you all have told me to forgive him because apparently a man's cheating is not a big deal because men can't control themselves. That was hilarious. As if that's going to help me. Anyways, I talked to him. I explained to him that his past bothers me. I mean, he cheated on his wife when she was going through something so traumatic. I brought up the fact that I am also in high risk when it comes to pregnancy. I told him I cannot fully trust him, that he will not cheat on me as well. He told me he has learned his lesson from the previous time. When his infidelity got exposed, he had people around him calling him a monster. His parents still don't talk to him directly. He feels guilty because of it and regrets it. Then I told him that maybe we should date more rather than rushing into marriage and maybe go to couples counseling. That's when he got slightly mad. He said that if I don't trust him, then there is no point in being together. I tried to fight and say that it's not like that. We just need some time. He has to understand that. He told me again that it was not fair for me to judge him when he never judged me because of my past. I asked him what he means by that. He pointed out that he knows how in the past I used to sleep around a lot. Okay, let me be clear to you. Yes, when I was in college, I did have a few one-night stands and a few serious relationships. I told him he was being illogical because, even though I have a sexual history, I never cheated on any of my boyfriends. I always called it quits when I realized it was not meant to be. He kept pressing the matter and says that I should let it go because he let go of my past. I said my past is in the past, and now I'm thinking about my future, and he is so pathetic to even compare his immoral cheating with my past. He argued that I was immoral too. It felt like a dead-end road. We both shouted and fought, and eventually I took the ring off and said goodbye. The last thing he said was that his past and baggage aren't as big as mine, and that I'm a hypocrite for judging him, that I will have a hard time finding a partner who is willing to be with a loose girl like me. It hurts to be honest. I never thought he would act like that. I am trying my best to move on, but I am still stuck in a limbo, and his words are repeating inside my head. Edit. If you guys think you can make me feel bad for having sex in the past, then save it. You won't be the first red pill MG toe dickhead who has ever said that to me. I just laugh at your face because I'm pretty sure you guys get no women. And don't threaten me with nobody will wife you up. I will never understand someone whose thinking is so backwards in the first place. Dying single isn't as bad as rotting with men like you guys. In the comments, Little Ball of Fur says, You just met the person who traumatized his ex-wife. The real him. Exactly. There's a saying that I live by, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. This is him telling you that he doesn't actually believe what he did to his ex-wife was wrong, and only ever says it because he knows that's how he should feel, rather than how he does feel. 
That was a perfectly fine compromise that you suggested about dating for a bit and seeing a counselor. Run fast and run far. There is an additional saying that I live by. If you want to see who a man really is, tell him no. That's never failed me. This man is 34 and playing these manipulation games with you, a 25 year old. He knows exactly what he is doing. He knows a woman in her 30s, or hell, even late 20s, would see him for who he was. He got mad at the mention of couples counseling because with that, you would not only be being taught how to navigate relationships, but his tactics would be even clearer. He is not a good man, and he is not a good partner. He still works with the woman he was cheating with on his newly miscarried wife. Can you live with that? Even without his anger and the miscarriage and such? If that was the only thing residual from his past infidelity, can you live with that? I wouldn't trust him nor her as far as I could throw them. Walk away. Take this relationship as a lesson and its ending as a blessing. You did the right thing. He hasn't learned anything about his actions. He blames the cheating on the traumatic experience the ex-wife went through, and now he is blaming the breakup on you not letting go of the past versus recognizing it's about ability to trust when he had some pitfalls, aka still talking to the co-worker that he cheated on his ex with. Trust is earned. Yes, his past is his past, but his actions somewhat showed that he can't be trusted. Exactly. OP accidentally met the mistress in person after her fiancé flirted with her at a work party. This man could have transferred or found a different job where he wouldn't have contact with the mistress. Instead, he is openly flirting with her in front of OP. Those aren't the actions of a man who has done cheating. They are the actions of a man who is keeping his options on ice. Posted by user Particular Figure 123 titled my husband has a second family. The ultimate cliche has happened in my life, and I'm absolutely broken. My husband, my rock, has been having an affair for over 17 years. We have been married for over 25 years. We have three beautiful children, two in college, and one who still lives at home. But it turns out, he's had another set this whole time. My husband is an insurance broker. He has multiple branches over the country which he spends week on, week off. Turns out, on his week off, he's been with his other family in Albuquerque, where his other branch is. He's got a fiancé with whom he has two kids with, both in their early teens. I found out when I went to make a new Facebook account, and when I searched my husband's first name, another profile with another last name popped up and through that profile were the links to his fiancés and his other kids' Facebooks. My husband is currently with said family, and I know it's him because his most recent post is a photo of him and that other family eating dinner. Among those photos were photos of him kissing the girl and him being fatherly with kids who look nearly identical to my husband. I am almost broken. Almost every part of me wants to scream in his face and reprimand him for ruining my life. But another part of me wants to pretend to be ignorant and to just let it be. Because our life is so peaceful. He is so good with our kids. He's the main source of financial income. He's loving. But he's also all of those things to another family. Not only would I be tearing a gaping hole into my family, but I'd be opening up a vortex for them too. My heart is in shambles. I've never cried so much in my life. My youngest son is currently on a graduation trip with friends, and I'm alone till my lying, cheating, bastard husband comes home. My life is absolutely wrecked. It's literally a movie plot. I'm hoping he'll just come home soon, and it'll be a big misunderstanding why he's kissing a woman with a ring on her finger. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm tempted to pack a bag and just leave. I can't be in the home where we've raised our kids, where we've spent every Christmas for the last 26 years, and where I've been alone on New Year's taking care of our babies while he works his ass off. I just can't. I want to leave a note for him to come home to, hurt him like he's hurt me, but I don't think that's possible. I don't know how I'll ever face him again. This seems like an impossible situation to not confront. I just want to know the optics of all of this personally. I want to know how he has the time and energy to get away with all of this. Like, damn, how does he manage this and how has he not managed to get caught for such a long time? In the comments, 
I'm not a therapist, but if it makes you feel any better, it's not you who will ruin anything by calling him out. It's him that caused this, and no one else. The damage is done. Don't call him out until you get evidence and contact a lawyer. I wouldn't doubt if he's planning on leaving as soon as all of her kids are adults, and then taking everything and running off to marry the other woman. Don't let him leave you homeless and destitute. Also, he may be waiting for the last kid to leave so he can leave too. Take what you're entitled to, including spousal support, until you remarry. Then just never remarry. Live in sin and collect his money. You said not only would I be tearing a gaping hole into my family, I'd be opening up a vortex for them too. He has already torn a gaping hole into your family. He's opened a vortex for everyone. He chose to lie to you and to the other family. He has wronged you and has wronged the other woman. You get to feel angry. Pay attention to the advice on how to separate and then live your best life while taking the time to mourn all of that time with your husband. You deserve the best. Get proof before you tell him. Screenshot everything because it will disappear to cover his tracks and will be he said, she said. What he did was wrong and the violation of trust cannot be reset. You have to decide for yourself if you're okay with sharing. If you are, make a plan that you are comfortable with regarding shared time and present it to him as an alternative to divorce. Write it out. Make some compromises if you want and both sign it. If he violates the agreement, then leave. But this only works if you are truthful with yourself and can handle going forward. If not, get a lawyer before you tell him and figure out the divorce terms first. And back up to the post. This is a follow-up. Thank you so much for the advice. I'm not in any means good with legal things, so all the legal advice has been noted. I've rung an attorney, and we are discussing the process. He's also told me to gather as much evidence as I could, such as photos of the Facebook pages, text messages, and recent flight information. All has been put together into a folder, and I'll present it to a judge or jury when we go into some sort of divorce proceeding. Again, not fully clear with specifics, but it's a good sign. I've also been in contact with the other woman. I've told her and explained the situation, and she was equally as distraught. From what I'm aware, she's financially independent from him, and they don't share property, so it seems very clean cut on her behalf. My husband is aware of the fact I know, and is currently staying in a hotel, but he is unaware that the other woman knows. I confronted him when he walked through the door. He started to cry and plead, and it was honestly kind of pathetic. I mean, I was crying too, but I've chosen to think of him as a pathetic coward for doing this. Because he is. But anyways, I have my name on the property, we both do, so it's not like I can just kick him out, but he's chosen to stay away for my sake. All I'm thinking is, if he chose to stay away for my sake, maybe being faithful for my sake should have been considered too. Despite this, he's staying away. He's in a hotel downtown where he calls every few hours to check up. I am no longer sad. Well, I am, but I'm way more furious than sad currently. My kids still have no idea, and my youngest thinks that my husband is just working in Albuquerque because of the business problem. I'm still confused at how to tell them that they have two half-siblings and two parents, one with an extra backup parent. I'm just feeling very, very unappreciated and unwanted lately, but your kind words have been so helpful. Thank you guys so much. Much love. And now, on to the update. Firstly, I would like to start off by thanking everyone who had positive things to say. The widespread support has been so helpful during this period, and I am truly amazed at the kindness shown to me. Thank you. And now to the update. I won't be going into details about the divorce because it's still ongoing, but do rest assured it is happening. A few people seemed worried that I was going to stay with him, and for a period of time I would have, but no, we are divorcing. On that note, I have completely cut contact with him. Our contact is through lawyers only. He officially moved out of the house, and my middle moved back in to help out over the break. My kids have, to my knowledge, cut most contact with him, but I haven't asked as it's not my place. Also, custody isn't a problem because my youngest turned 18 recently. We've also been in contact with the other family, and we even spent Christmas together. Despite being a little awkward at first, me and his ex fiance are trying our hardest to bring the kids together harmoniously. And that'll be the last update. 
I'm logging off of Reddit now. I'll continue living my life. I'll try to support my kids through theirs, but I'll forever be thankful for the support and love that you have all shown. Yours truly and sincerely, OP. In the comments, Kalnessa says, Serves him right for the ex-wife and ex-fiancé to become friends and leave him out in the cold. Maybe he'll start a third family. Almost certainly. He'll probably tell his third wife that he's a widower or his previous crazy ex-wife abandoned him and poisoned his children against him. Karma is a nice idea, but it never stays with people like this for very long, like water off a duck's back. I always worry when a guy says his wife was crazy. I even hear it from guys that are still married, but refer to their wives as crazy. It's a huge red flag. I don't know how these guys feel justified in saying those kinds of things, like they're bragging. Me too. I went on a date with a guy who said his ex was crazy. He told me that she caught him at his other baby mum's house and got upset. I asked if he was sleeping with his ex and he said yes. I asked him if he was sleeping with the baby's mother and he said yes. Turns out the crazy ex and the baby mama were both pregnant at the same time. I then asked if he told her he loved her and he said yes. So this dude is actively cheating on a woman he loved and dated while carrying his child with the other child's mother who is also carrying his child. She of course was mad when she found out. I said, you're calling her crazy? And he said, yes, yeah, she is. I knew this date would be a one and done. Geistbar replies, I'd almost consider it a bigger red flag that he's willing to just admit all of this to you outright on a first date. Dude is so supremely dumb or amoral or something that he thought that you wouldn't see anything wrong with what he told you. Misfit Penguin says, that's one cheetah with a lot of energy. I'll give him that. Two families, five kids for 17 years? Jeez. Yeah, I don't know where he gets the energy. Right? If I had a second family, it would be a little apartment out of town, which is stocked with snacks, is immaculately clean, and I mostly sleep in. Sometimes read books. Yup. Having a second family is living the dream all right. Apparently my husband's grandfather had a second family in a town about 45 minutes away from where he lived. After the grandfather died, a bunch of half-siblings showed up at my father-in-law's door, but he wasn't interested in building a relationship with them. My mum and uncles felt the same way when they learned they had an older half-brother. I thought it was petty and kind of ridiculous. It's not the kid's fault, but that was their choice. And yeah guys, that about wraps that one up. Once again, good riddance to bad trash. I'm glad that OP is going through all the right channels to deal with this situation, and I do hope that that guy gets his shit together, but as we saw in the comments, I don't think Karma will be biting him in the ass too hard anytime soon. As unfortunate as that is. Anyway guys, what do you think of this one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Bay Window, titled, Am I the asshole for telling my dad I have no interest in meeting his new family? I, 17 female, haven't had a relationship with my dad since I was eight years old. It broke me when my dad left because it wasn't just him. I lost my aunts and uncles, cousins, grandparents, they all stopped talking to me. I've been in therapy since I was 11. I worked out a lot of issues about my dad. My mother remarried when I was seven. I have a stepdad and two brothers that I love very much. I am applying to colleges and feel happier than I ever have. Three weeks ago, I got a call from my dad and he told me that he was engaged and he was getting married in the fall and that he wanted me to come to a reunion so they can get to know each other's family and I can get to know my new siblings. He said she wanted to meet his kids before they got married. My father has three kids, me, my brother and sister. I have a relationship with my sister, but we're not close because she lives far away. I hung up. I couldn't deal with it because I was emotional and I bawled my eyes out. The next day I called my dad and I told him that I had no interest in meeting his new family, that he was cruel for abandoning an eight-year-old and even more cruel for reaching out because he was forced to do so. I already had a family that I was happy and secure with and I had no interest in him being in my life because he was no longer my dad and to not contact me. I then called my sister to ask if he'd reached out to her and he did and she was going to go. I told her the conversation and she said what I said was appropriate because it was true but I could have been nicer about it. I was a bit sad but my family was there to comfort me. 
My sister sent me a link to a Facebook post that my new stepmother had shared, saying she couldn't believe that a perfect man could have such terrible children. My sister then told me she wasn't going to go to the reunion because she agreed that she didn't want to meet this woman after what she had said about us. I thought that would be the end of it, and though that post upset me, I tried to let it go, but I started getting calls from my father's side of the family, even my brother, telling me that I was a beer, and an asshole for ruining the reunion by telling my dad that he wasn't my dad. They told me that they cancelled the whole thing, and he was questioning whether he should get married at all. They told me that I could have reached out, it wasn't fair they were being the ones blamed for the falling out. I have since blocked them. I did see a post on Facebook saying my dad postponed his wedding, but now I can't stop thinking about what they said. I mean, yes, I could have reached out, but I feel that's not fair because I was eight. I shouldn't have been the one that makes amends. I know that I was harsh and could have gone about telling him I didn't want him in my life in a nicer way, but I don't think I did anything wrong. Maybe that's because everybody around me is taking my side. I've had multiple people tell me I'm an asshole. I feel guilty and I want an outsider perspective. Am I the asshole? Edit, I just wanted to add some stuff. My sister is 23, my brother is 28. My mother had nothing to do with my family cutting me out. Two years ago, I called my dad under the advice of my therapist, and when he answered, I started crying and he didn't say anything, and he just hung up on me. I think that's when I really moved on from my dad. I don't blame you at all in this situation. I don't think you're an asshole for this. I feel like at a young age, you were tossed into a losing battle, and no matter what you did, there would have been a negative outcome. Like, you are not old enough or mature enough to fix those bonds, and it's not your job to reach out. Their reaction to what you've said is unjustified, I feel like. I feel like these people are a bit delusional, thinking that things can be all hunky-dory after they've not put any effort into your relationship. So my judgment is absolutely not the asshole. In the comments, on therapy and the brother's relationship, OP says, Hello, thank you for your kind words. I'm currently still in therapy. I don't plan on leaving anytime soon, and I know that I need it and it benefits me in more ways than one. I am my mother's only biological child, and she has said that I should cut ties with my brother. I have also been talking to my sister quite a bit today about what we should do about our brothers. We only share DNA from our dad, the same as I do with my sister, and she says that I need to cut ties with him completely as well, but at the same time, I do feel bad because he went through the same abandonment that I did. It's just my dad actually came back to him, whereas he didn't come back to me and my sister. As of right now, I haven't cut ties, well, not officially anyway with my brother, but it does seem like that's where it's headed. Someone asks, what on earth did he tell his family when he stopped talking to you? And OP replies, I don't know what he told his family or his fiance, but when I started building a relationship with my sister, he did tell my sister's mother that my mother had filed a restraining order against him and that that was the reason that he couldn't be around me, which is 100% not true. I can assure you, there was never a restraining order filed. My sister's mother figured that out when she talked to my father about it. He admitted that he lied. About the timeline of her parents' marriage, OP says, My parents got divorced when I was two. For the next five years, I would go back and forth from my mum to my dad's house. Over the last two years that I had a relationship with my dad, those visits went from every weekend, to every other weekend, to once a month, to every other month, and then there was nothing from my dad or any of his family. One day they just stopped talking to me. About three months after my father had not come pick me up for his annual visitation, my mother took me to his house, and we found out that he had moved back to Mississippi where his family was from. After that, we never talked again until I was around 12, and he called me to tell me happy birthday. He called me one more time the same year to say Merry Christmas. And after that, I didn't hear from him again until three weeks ago when he called me. My dad was such a jealous freak, like to the point where he would be mad that she went to work. There was this guy that my mother worked with, and he was super jealous of him. And one day he finally just accused her of cheating, and she said she didn't cheat, and he didn't believe her, and he left, and then he came home. The next day, he admitted to having sex with another woman, and then they got divorced. About two years later, my mum started a new job, and she ended up dating her boss, and they got married when I was seven, and now he's my stepdad. But I also only hear my parents' side of the story. I've never heard my dad's side of the story. 
He's never really thought that it was important enough to tell his side of the story, but that's what I know of the whole situation. I really don't know the true story, because I was two when everything happened, and me and my dad were never really close. He never told me, like, important things about his life. We didn't talk much when I was with my dad. I mostly spend time with his boyfriend. On the topic of dad's messed up marriages, OP says, Me and my siblings all have different mothers. My father has been married four times. If he does marry this woman, this will be his fifth marriage. I didn't even know of my sister's existence until I was nine years old. My sister's mother reached out to my mother when she noticed that her daughter's child support had gone down because my father wasn't meeting his mandatory visitation rights and had to pay more child support towards me. The court told my sister's mother that he had two other children and she reached out to my mother. We had dinner together. She also reached out to my brother's mother, but they had no interest in knowing my sister. I don't know if my father has other children, and as far as I'm aware, he doesn't. But he lied to me and my brother about my sister, and he lied to my mother about the existence of my brother before she had me. So honestly, who knows? But I do know that his fiancée has children between the ages of I believe 3 and 19. Someone asks, what the heck did he say to you on the phone? And OP replies, the way I remember the conversation going was him saying, Hello, this is so-and-so, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm having this family reunion because recently I got engaged, and I'm going to be getting married in the fall, and I was hoping that you would be interested in coming to the reunion. Your brothers are going to be there, as well as the rest of my family, and you can meet my fiancé and your new step-siblings. That's not exactly word for word, but that's the gist of the conversation. And no, he did not apologize. When I called him back the next day, he actually sounded quite mad that I hung up on him in the first place, and he said relatively the same thing, just in a harsh tone with fewer words. And that's when I told him that I didn't want to meet his family. He called me about 40 times after I hung up over the course of the next two days. In the comments, Sapo Fun says, Not the asshole. He is the one who didn't reach out to you since you were eight until much later. If I were you, I would have answered that new woman's Facebook with, what kind of perfect man of a father keeps away from his eight-year-old daughter only to contact her when she's 17? I am petty though. Your kind of petty is the perfect kind of petty. Not the asshole, kiddo. Your dad is only reaching out to make himself look good. F that. And it seems he met the perfect nasty match in his fiance. Good on your sister for sticking with you. Work Jabber says, are you saying that after ignoring you for nine years, his family got in touch to castigate you for rejecting them? Let that sink in. Also, consider that your dad might have lied to both his family and his new wife about why you're upset. Not the asshole. And now, on to the update. So I've talked to my dad and his fiance. I told her everything about everything. Their wedding was off for 11 days, but now it's back on. She didn't really say much to me about it. She mostly just brushed past it. They want to come out here, where I live, and have dinner with me and my mom. My sister has also agreed to come to the dinner, but now he's talking about coming to stay with him for a little while. And I don't want to do that. I'm a little nervous about the whole thing now, and I just don't want to start another dance with my father that ends badly for me. I don't plan on going to the wedding or any other events that include my dad after the dinner. The only reason that I agreed to go to the dinner was because my sister had asked me, not because he asked me. I don't have any interest in having a relationship with my dad, but I do think that it would be healthy if I didn't have any hatred for my dad. I don't want to be in this limbo where I just feel shitty for the rest of my life because I have hatred toward my dad and I felt like this was just an easier way to deal with it and move on and let go. And now, on to the final update. I had dinner with my father and his new fiancé, as well as her children, on the 18th of May. I feel like I got a lot of childhood feelings off of myself. I explained to my father, his fiancé, and her family why I felt the way that I felt, as well as my reasoning for not wanting to come. I told him that I had no intentions of being in his life over the necessary amount. My dad did ask me quite a couple of times if I was going to be up to going to the wedding. I did agree to, but I made it clear that I don't want to be involved as an official member in his life, more so someone he might see around the holidays, birthdays, or special events. But other than that, I have no intentions of seeing or interacting with him. He seemed fine with that, and it was a perfect solution for me. 
I've been told by many of you, as well as many people in my personal life, that I should just cut him out of my life and move on. I just feel that having unresolved feelings is unhealthy. Not having answers to things that you could have answers for seems kind of ridiculous if you have the option to get the answers that you want. My relationship with my father is never going to be great. It's never going to be perfect. It's probably never going to be anything other than okay, because I don't really think that I can see him as anything other than a deadbeat dad. But I'm going to try my best to be civil, because I don't want to have any more unresolved feelings with anybody else. I know that it's been over a month since my last update, but during that time, I finished my senior years with four Bs and four As. I turned 18 on the 21st of May. I graduated high school and I started a new job. It's been a pretty busy month, and so honestly, I wasn't even nervous about talking to my father because I feel like it was just so busy that it was just another thing to do. But I'm glad that it's over and done with, and I can just move on with my life. In the comments, Green Olive 123 says, I feel like he just wants her to fall in line, like an expectation for the wedding pomp and circumstance, then he can go on with his new fifth family and pretend the rest don't exist again. I feel bad for OP because I think she has more hurt coming her way. At least she has a therapist already. He'll abandon her again as soon as the wedding is over. He's only making a production of her attending because he's trying to act normal. He'll be back when the transplant is needed. Quote, I've talked to my dad and his fiance. The wedding was off for 11 days, but now it's back on. Poop birds of a shit feather flock together. Yeah, no decent person would ever marry someone like that. And perfect man? Oh boy, this woman is in for one hell of a surprise. Though she certainly deserves what's coming at this point. My mum's stepbrother was like OP's dad. Several members of the family tried hinting to his third wife not to marry him. I was maybe 12 at the time. He already had two kids by two different mothers that he maybe saw once a year. Third wife actually lasted quite a while. I think kids three and four were preteens before he walked out on them. But yeah, turns out she was kind of a jerk too, and not very bright. Blue Pancakes 18 says, Last year I was low contact with my dad, and he met and married a woman. As in met and married in the same eight month period, and they wanted me to meet her before they got married. But when I asked to meet with just her for a coffee, she said no. I explained that I didn't feel safe with my dad, as he is an emotionally manipulative jerk, but she still said no. She didn't see the point of meeting just the two of us, as without dad there, she wouldn't be here. And she was afraid that I would attack her. I have zero history of violence, of drugs or alcohol, or mental health issues. I was a social worker, and now I'm a therapist. She knows that his child doesn't feel safe with him, and she still married him. Just found out that all his kids have been mostly written out of his will, and the majority will go to her. Surprise, surprise. Culture Inner 3316 says, Oh, OP. I don't understand why she would choose to interact with these assholes, but I also can't relate to her situation. I hope she doesn't get her hopes up or heartbroken again. Some therapists push the closure angle instead of helping people learn that not everything will get closure. You have to learn to move past what you can't control that isn't healthy, whether or not you feel closure. Hopefully OP will learn that without too much pain. Closure is overrated as an idea. Too often, attempting to get closure just exposes you to more of the bullshit the person inflicted you to previously. You don't get the feeling of closure you want, and you get hurt again. The best closure is sometimes to burn the door to the ground. G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user, who effing knows, too, titled, Am I the asshole for calling my mother-in-law on my fiancé? My fiancé, male 22, was injured over a month ago and had surgery to correct things literally two days after the accident. I, 21 female, have been by his side the entire time. I have more or less become his caregiver. In the last month, I've taken over the role of keeping our house together. I cook all the meals, I take care of the pets, I stay up all night to tend to his endless needs. I take him to the bathroom, I've been working remote, I haven't left the house for more than an hour since the accident, aside from taking him to and from appointments. I'm not saying this to complain, I am grateful that my life allows for me to support him in the way that I have. My problem is his attitude. 
He was given very strong painkillers for the first two weeks after surgery. He had to extend his time on them and recently stopped taking them in the last week. When he was taking them, he thanked me, told me how much he loved me, apologized at every step, though he didn't need to. Without the meds, he doesn't seem to see that I'm helping him. Every dish I bring him is the wrong one. He will yell for me, and when I come, he will tell me to F off. If he's in pain, he expects me to fix it. I am exhausted. I can't do anything right and it's wearing on me. I haven't slept in weeks. I haven't seen a friend or family member in way too long. I can't even be on the phone for more than 10 minutes without it being an issue. After days of what turned into verbal abuse, I called my mother-in-law. I told her everything as soon as I saw he was asleep. I cried for about 15 minutes. I felt terrible unloading on her like that, but I had so much built up frustration, I just couldn't. She was very supportive on the phone, let me know that I wasn't wrong to feel like that, and let me cry. After hearing everything, she was furious and ended our call to talk to her son. She tore him a new asshole. I heard him trying to defend himself through the door, but it was mostly just stammering. She flew up yesterday and put me up at a nice hotel. I haven't heard much from my fiancé since I left, but as I was leaving, he was yelling at me for calling his mom. He said he didn't want to marry someone who couldn't be there for him in sickness. I told him I loved him and I was sorry, I am just so tired. He didn't care and just told me to go, and that his mom could do a better job for him than I ever could. So now I'm on my way to the nice hotel room, feeling like a major asshole. I need to know if I'm wrong here. Edit. He began weaning off two weeks ago and became fully dependent on over-the-counter medication this week. He did not stop taking them cold turkey. His doctors were heavily involved too due to previous drug abuse. Edit 2. Mother-in-law is taking him back to their hometown once they can get flights together. I'll stay in this hotel until then. Fiancé doesn't want to talk yet and to be honest, I don't blame him. He knows what's coming and that I am pissed. I will go visit him in a week, so I have until then to decide how I want to move forward. My mother called me last night about a venue that she found in my hometown, and I told her what's going on. She doesn't want to spend a bunch of money on a pending divorce, so we're stepping back from planning. Not much more to add. I'm excited to see my pets and to be able to sleep in my own bed. I'm going to try to make my sister fly to my state so I can have some company. That's pretty much it. I'm in serious awe about how I let my life get like this, but oh well, today will be better. I guess all I can say in this one is that it's not your fault, OP. Everything he's done has been his choice and an active choice at that. I'm sure the previous history of drug abuse also factors into this and that he's not going cold turkey, uh, the meds are different and are making him act up. Those are all definitely things that could be adding to his anger, to his general feelings, but None of that is an excuse for his actions. No one deserves to be abused by their partners and what he's done is wrong. In the comments, 12 Days Late says, Not the asshole. You've gone above and beyond. In sickness and in health does not mean never needing a break. It doesn't mean accepting abuse. Can you break up with the fiancé and keep the mother-in-law? She sounds great. I second this. Toss the fiancé, keep mother-in-law. Maybe. Withdrawal and pain make assholes of us all. OP, previously he was super grateful, but maybe give it a few weeks? Not the asshole. It's in sickness and in health, not through abuse and through toxicity. This is a distinction that needs to be highlighted more often. You just got a taste of your life together, a real behind the scenes. You've done nothing wrong here, and I would urge you to take this time away to reflect on your relationship and what you want moving forward not the asshole. Not to mention the throwaway line there at the end, due to previous drug abuse. I bet that being on the good med for two weeks did something to him and he's currently in withdrawal, which opens up all sorts of cans of worms for future relapses. I have been with my hubby for 17 years. I've been tattling on him for at least 15. I go to his mum when he's being unreasonable because, unlike my own, she will still love him. I think it's great you went to his mum for two reasons. One, while she may be mad at him, it's not going to change the fact that she loves him. Your family and friends would be more likely to change their viewpoints of him. And two, it's so awesome that you have the type of relationship with his mom that you could go cry to her. As previously stated, ditch him, but keep her. 
She sounds like a winner, not the asshole. I went to my in-laws for help and support when I discovered my ex's 400 texts to the woman with whom he was having an affair. My ex-mother-in-law's response was, how dare you check his texts? There is an update in the comments. OP says, I've returned. My last night in the hotel, I called my parents to make a plan and it didn't go well. I'm home with my fiance again. He won't talk to me except to bark orders at me. I'm hoping I can move out within a month or two. Surgery and recovery are expensive and we have been living on my income for some time and I'm pretty broke, but I'm keeping my head up and I'm confident that I can get myself out. Someone asks OP, why didn't he go with his mom? And OP replies, I know she pushed for him to go home, but he is a very stubborn boy. Thank you, I will be okay. And now onto the updates. So I went home two days after posting. Things were sad. My mother-in-law had cleaned, but the energy in the house was a bummer. The first thing he said to me when I got back was, I'm glad you're back. Can you make me a snack? There was no apology, no accountability, just a task. He only talked to me when he needed something. His attitude was worsening. My mother-in-law took the rest of the prescribed opiates, so I knew he wasn't using. The weekend following the mother-in-law debacle, my wonderful fiancé told me that he had friends coming to stay for the weekend. Two hours heads up. Didn't ask. I sighed and made up the guest room. His friend and friend's girlfriend came to stay. During the stay, my fiancé bought me flowers, got out of bed daily, took me out, and let me call my parents unsupervised. The day they left, he was back to bed with a shitty attitude. I wish I could say that I'm in my own apartment with my pets and a bottle of rosé that's just for me, or with my girlfriends that I haven't seen in months. Unfortunately, I'm writing this on the couch while I listen to the music that are his endless demands. However, I do have a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm scared to leave him in person, but he's leaving the country for a month in April. My sister lives abroad, and I'm working on getting to her during that month. It's a process, especially with pets. I look forward to getting there. My mother hasn't spoken to me since I told her that I was returning the ring, because that's not what we do. We clean our messes. But I have my father's unwavering support. I'll miss my mother-in-law, but I deserve that kindness and understanding from my partner, not his mother. I have stopped forcing myself to find the joy in his presence, and it's helping to fuel my drive to get out of here. I may update again when I get to my sister's, but don't be surprised if I do my best to put this chapter behind me. Thanks for the kind words. I hope you all get the love and hugs you need. Someone asks OP, why isn't he with his mum? And OP replies, Mother-in-law was planning on taking him, but he refused. Things got very bad since I posted this. I'm currently in my childhood room at my father's, decently hungover, and I am officially a single lady. On the topic of calling her parents unsupervised, OP says, I called my sister once when I was scared of him a while back. She called the police. He liked to be in the room when I was talking to family following that incident, so I didn't say anything dramatic. I should have seen how bad it was. Typing that out just feels gross. And more about what happened. OP says, I don't want to get too into it, but we had a bad night. It ended with me locked on the balcony. I still have some bruising. I was able to call my father on my watch, and we made a plan to get me home the next morning. And now onto the next update. It's been some time, and I finally feel comfortable enough with my situation to update y'all. My pets and I are safely with my father. We've been here a couple of weeks, and things are going well. I'm working remotely, but also searching for a new position closer to my hometown so I can still have a social life. My animals are adapting to life without their dad, and I'm doing my best to join them. My ex and I were high school sweethearts. I have been through most major life events with him. There is only a small fraction of my life as an adult that I have been through without him. Leaving was really hard. I am still second guessing myself, but I recently realized that by not enabling his shitty behavior, I really am helping him. He went on his planned trip and I took the opportunity to get everything I needed from our shared home and made arrangements going forward for my lease. He took his trip as an opportunity to reflect on his behavior within our relationship, specifically the last year. He is pretty disappointed in himself. It seems that the company that he was on vacation with helped to hold a pretty clear mirror to his face, and he was really unhappy with what he saw. 
I feel bad he's having a really hard time with this self-awareness, but I do really appreciate the accountability that has been accompanied. I'd like to add that I don't hold any resentment towards him. I am hurt and disappointed with the way that he felt he could treat me, but I don't hate him. I was sad to hear how upset he was with himself. Though a little relieved I wasn't being painted as the crazy ex, I was sure he would paint me as. Since getting home, he has started therapy and is looking for a new sponsor. We talk about once a week so he can see his pets. I also do not mind the positive updates. When we talk, it's respectful. There is still a lot of love, but I've set boundaries that keep him from hounding me about our relationship. I have also started a new therapy. This is my first serious breakup and the aftershock is real. It's hard to lose your best friend, future husband, and father of your fur babies in one go. I am confident, however, that this is essential to both of our growth. I'm happy that we can have a respectful, albeit small relationship. Who knows what the future holds, but for now, I'm doing my best to be content with this new independence, and grateful that my life can go through roadblocks and I can get through them easily, thanks to my amazing support system. I still haven't spoken with my mother. That will be much later, and I will be requiring a serious apology. I love my mum but I'm not going to stand for her demanding I make really unhealthy choices to appease her and so she doesn't have to be embarrassed by my broken home. I mean, come on, man. I'm 21. My broken little tyke's home, let's be real. I am young and smart and pretty, and I have a really good kind life in my future. Thank you for helping me not to settle for comfortable. I hope I never have to update again, and I hope you are all having a really good Friday. In the comments, someone says to OP that it's good his behavior is improving, but don't rejoin the relationship. And OP replies, Absolutely. I'm pleased to see progress, period. I have no intentions of rejoining that relationship. I am just really happy that he is also getting a new start that is positive, and I am proud of him for taking it seriously and getting the help he needs. I was fully expecting self-destruction while blaming me, and instead, he's owning up to his mistakes and trying to do better for himself. And now for the next update, titled, Surprise Twist. I left out of my last post my final interaction with my ex. It didn't seem too important at the time, but we had a final hookup the last time I saw him, and I am now pregnant. This was my biggest fear while with him, having a child and being solely responsible for them. I am now in that exact position. I told my ex a couple of days after I found out. I assured him that this changes nothing about our relationship, but as he is the father, he has the right to be involved in the conversation. He declared he is moving to my hometown and he will be the best goddamn father you've ever seen. I have my doubts. I am full of anxiety. I've barely learned how to treat myself correctly. I want my kid to be so beyond loved. I want my child to have everything in the world and more. I don't know how to do that on my own. I'm encouraged to see my ex making big boy steps to be a part of our kid's life, but I'm also cautious he is doing all of this to get back into my good graces. I can't be a mum to my ex and my future child. I can't fall back into the same dynamic that made me leave. I am doing what I can to stay strong and hold my ground, but then he sends me flowers, or a massage certificate, or a bump box. Every gift, every check-in text, and every mention of our baby gets me closer to going back to him. I don't really know why I'm posting this. I guess it's cathartic to get this all down and out in my own words. It's hard to write your narrative and your words in a small gossipy hometown. It's hard to be pregnant and single. But the hardest thing is telling your father that you're expecting no matter how old you are. I know we will be okay. I'm already trying everything in my power to be a good mom already. I am trying to be respectful to everyone I can regarding this situation, but damn it's tough. Anyway, that's my ramble. I doubt anyone reads these anymore lol, but I'm glad I said it. In the comments, someone asks OP, are you sure you want to be tied to him for the rest of your life? because that's what this baby will do. And OP replies, no, I'm not. I'm not too sure about much right now. I do know that I already love this baby more than I can say. I know that he loves our baby already too, and that's all I really care about. His mom is good at reining him in, and I have to believe that things are going to be okay. And now onto the final update. I love you, but 
Fa. My mum and I have always had a rocky relationship. I went to live with my dad as soon as I could decide and kept my contact minimal. After high school, I moved away for college and for a good job with my ex. My mum followed me to my new city and we tried to rebuild our relationship. Unfortunately, I got scared of the choices I made when I was with her, so I went back to low contact and she moved back to my hometown. Unfortunately, recently my life turned upside down. Long story short, my boyfriend and I broke up. I moved home with my dad and got a new, better job, and then I found out I was pregnant. My dad has a full house, and I made the decision to move to my mother's guest house for my pregnancy so I can save more money for Bebe, and move out once they're around two months old. The timeline works for my finances, and I figured since I'm just on her property, not main house, it might be easy to keep a low profile. How naive. After work daily, she comes over to check on me. She hasn't failed to offer me an alcoholic beverage, not once since I moved in. She chain smokes right outside of my bedroom daily and stays late. I know it's her home. I know that she's very kind to have me here, but I'm growing a person right now. I'm preparing myself for motherhood, single motherhood. I work long demanding hours, I am stressed and isolated, I would love an effing drink, but I'm pregnant. I can't drink. The time I brought it up, I was screamed at, and she asked me to leave in the morning. It was really upsetting and stressful. I feel like she comes here to bait me into picking a fight so she can pull every power play to make me feel small. So anyway, mom, I love you, but fa man. I'm trying to give our entire family a healthy new friend. I am trying to re-establish myself as an adult in the town that I was a child in. I am trying to do better for myself and my baby. Please respect that for me. Please respect that enough for your grandchild. I love you. Please try to love me. In the comments, Corduroy Clementine says, OP at the beginning, I have an abusive boyfriend and a terrible mother. OP at the end, I now live in my mother's guest house and am pregnant by my abusive ex-boyfriend. That ex part doesn't sound like it will last long, honestly. She'll get tired of living with her mum and will move back in with him. She'll probably get married soon as well as a way for her fiancé to show his devotion, which is BS. I'm really trying not to victim blame, but OP reminds me of my sister. I'm no contact with her and her mess. I get that my sister is a victim of a few abusive relationships, but she was, when I cut her off, constantly going back and forth with two guys who apparently abused her. She'll break up with one, be single for a week, cry how life is hard, and find another ex. One time she found a new relationship that also, apparently, went abusive. That and her drug use made me cut her off over a decade ago, and I don't regret it. That type of victimhood is too much for most people to continue to empathize with, especially when the victim continues to put themselves in bad situations happily. It's been a decade since I had that conversation with her, but my family has given me updates, and she hasn't changed one bit. She had two kids with one abusive ex. That ex has custody of them, so she rarely sees them, and apparently she's now married and pregnant again with some guy that she met three months ago. She keeps reinforcing my need to stay away from her and her issues for my sanity. I wonder how OP's dad feels about her at this moment. Ah, she was so close to getting out and having that good kind of life that she wanted. Just a series of bad decisions. Cutting a long relationship, I think, would be very hard, but being friends with your ex is even harder. Eventually it led to pregnancy. I'm wondering if she was baby trapped, or if the sex was not planned and they did it without protection. Even then, she left her safe space at her dad's house and went to her mum's house, who's a real piece of work. A very bad choice in my opinion. I hope she gets better and has a good life, which she desperately deserves. Posted by user Electric Bumblebee, titled, I, female 37, am furious at my niece, female 19, for posting a picture of me online, but my sister, female 40, doesn't want to get involved. Recently, there was a wedding in the family, and I was one of the bridesmaids. I was getting ready at my sister's house, along with some of the other family members. It's important to note that the dress was a corset back, and very, very annoying to put on. 
but my husband, male 40, had kindly watched a how-to video and said that he would happily give me a hand getting it all on properly. The dress was causing a hassle and took much longer to put on than necessary, but eventually it was on and the wedding went smoothly. It was only after the wedding that I saw my niece had posted an album on Facebook with all the getting ready photos, and scrolling through it, one was taken of my husband and I as we struggled with the dress. I would like to note here that my husband and I were in a private room when getting ready, and the photo had been taken through the window. I had closed the curtains, but clearly had left a gap that was enough for the photo. It's not a very modest photo at all. My husband was trying to get the ribbons done up and had his hands under the dress, trying to make sure nothing was knotted and twisted from the inside. You can't see anything in the photo, but the dress is hitched up. I was furious immediately when I saw the photo. Why on earth would she post a photo of me getting dressed? I confronted her and she said that first, she posted it because she didn't have any other getting ready photos with me, and second, it showed mine and my husband's bond in that he was generously helping me. I told her that she had invaded our privacy in getting that photo, which is evidence enough I do not want it circulated. I also compared her to a peeping Tom, which is when it turned into a full-blown argument and my sister got involved. My sister said that I should be above name-calling and that my niece does not have to engage with someone who argues like a child. She also said that it was my niece's personal social media account and she can do with it what she wants. I said that it may be her social media, but it is a photo of me, which I have rights over. Besides, it was taken and posted without my consent. My sister said that it's up with the cops if I felt so violated, and then walked away. I'm not really sure where to go from here, but I just feel creeped out. I feel involving the cops would be throwing fuel on the fire, so any advice on navigating this would be appreciated. Honestly, I guess all you can do is make yourself a nuisance, report the post, get enough family members around this that you annoy them enough that it's easier just to take down that individual photo than it is to fight you constantly. That may be bad advice, but if they're so steadfast in not taking it down, I don't see what other options you're left with. In the comments, Dusty Graves says, Just report it on the social media platform? You can get it removed if it's a non-consensual photo of you. Besides that, distance yourself from your niece and sister, they don't respect you. Unfortunately, that won't necessarily do much. What do you mean? In my experience, Facebook have been good at taking down photos. My experience has been that Facebook takes no responsibility unless it's involving children, nudity, etc. They used to though, but the last few times I tried to report something, they basically just said that I should ask the person nicely to remove it, or hey, I could block and unfriend them so I wouldn't see the post anymore. Like that would solve the issue. They did nothing to help. The bigger concern here is, assuming she saw nothing wrong with the photo, that she hasn't removed it after you expressed outrage. She's 19. Maybe her and your ideas about what is appropriate are different, but she's old enough to do the right thing, in hindsight, with an apology. That's what I was thinking. I can see how she might be thinking it was a lovely photo and wanted to share it, but as soon as OP expressed that she wanted it taken down, why didn't she just do that, regardless if she agreed with OP's concerns or not? That's really odd to me. Don't you have the option to just go on said social media and report the picture? OP replies, I have reported the photo on Facebook, but all it says is that the photo will be investigated. I have not heard anything back, and it is still up. Kritek Jim says, It's a photo taken through a window without your permission, in a setting where you have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Your sister told you to take it up with the police, and I think she's right. You should take it up with the police. Edit, The reason the police will be all over this is precisely because they don't give a shit. It allows them to log a crime-solved stat without having to lift a finger or do anything remotely dangerous. They won't come to your burglary or robbery because that shit's hard. This is easy. They don't even need to find the person responsible. And now, on to the update. So I posted about two weeks ago asking for advice because my niece had photographed my husband and I through closed curtains while I changed my clothes and then posted the photo on Facebook. I had felt so violated, and I turned to Reddit because I did not really know where to go from there. Something that I had neglected to mention in my initial post, because I was worried it would end up being the topic of discussion, is that I am a Muslim woman and I wear a hijab in day-to-day -day life. 
I did not think that this changed the fact that someone took a photo of me while I was getting dressed and posted it online, but maybe it helps people understand why I was so upset, given that the photo was not very revealing by non-hijabi standards. That being said, the bridesmaid's dress was modest when it was actually on, and I wore a hijab on the day. In light of everyone's comments though, I thought that I had maybe been too emotional when talking to my niece, and I realized that my comments calling her a peeping Tom had not helped. So I organized a coffee date with her and my sister at the local cafe so that we could have more of a heart-to-heart. -heart. I decided to not include my husband because they might feel more comfortable if they were just women in the discussion. Now, I would like to note that my sister and her family are not religious, and my niece has never been religious, but she's always been around my family and is very aware of why I choose to dress modestly. She has never been disrespectful of this in the past, so I led with that. I said that I was upset because I had been violated in so many different ways when I had an expectation of privacy. I told her that it was always inappropriate to take a photo of someone through a closed curtain, but I felt even more exposed given that what she posted should not have been seen by anyone outside of who I feel comfortable with. I said that my bodily autonomy and my religion are both very important to me, and I felt like both had been discounted when I found the photo on Facebook. I also said that my choice had been taken away when she had refused to understand why I was upset and wanted it taken down. Side note, for those who commented that I should just report it, that was the first thing I did, and Facebook are allegedly still investigating, but the photo remains up. My niece's and sister's reaction was not what I expected at all. I went in hoping for a very honest and open discussion, but they came right out the gate saying that they had spoken to one of my niece's friends who was studying law, and she, female 20s, says that given the photo was taken on my sister's property and through my sister's window into my sister's house, the photo legally belonged to my sister, and by extension, her family. No crime had been committed seeing as the landholder had given her permission. I said that that was illogical, and would mean that any number of crimes could be committed so long as the landholder gives their permission, but my sister just said that that's the law so I should take it up with the judge. It was like talking to a brick wall. So eventually, I just got up, paid, and left. My husband said that I can probably go to a lawyer and get a cease and desist letter, or just something along the lines of asking that the photo be deleted. But I'm just so upset right now, I'm even struggling to think straight. The relationship seems to be over given the total lack of respect, but I never thought that it would be like this. I guess that my other option is the cops, but I don't want this to drag on for a million years. I know this isn't a happy ending, but the lesson for everyone is to always make sure that your curtains are closed. In the comments, Haunting Juice says, Just to summarize a long post, didn't see the first post looking for context, your niece posted a photo of you and your husband changing to Facebook? Wearing a hijab or not, this is not okay behavior. I'm Australian and an atheist, and I'd never post a photo of my 8-year-old son in the bath, even if he was covered. If at 19 you're taking photos of people undressed, how are you not a peeping Tom? And OP replies, Thank you for the good idea. I'll put a TLDR at the bottom. For context, my husband was helping me get dressed and the dress was hitched up around my legs. My niece took a photo of this through a gap in a closed curtain and posted on Facebook, and the justification being that it showed mine and my husband's bond. She is now refusing to take it down. I agree that it's wrong and I feel incredibly violated, but unfortunately both my sister and my niece are incredibly unhelpful. Why 90210 says, OP had the expectation of privacy. Photos in a public setting have a different set of parameters. Dressing room with shades drawn are nowhere near a public setting. I think OP can get the photos taken down. Also, this is a weird freaking hill to die on. I can't see why they wouldn't just delete the photo. Right? It's such a weird power struggle. I wonder if OP's religion is a secret factor here. It's gotta be. I'm interested to know if this is her blood sister or sister-in-law, and if so, where their deviation in faith came. Did OP become religious on her own, or did the sister leave the religion? Either way, it sounds like there is definitely some distaste, to put it politely, on the sister and niece's behalf, because the hijab is a serious, serious thing. Shake my head, people make me sick. But yes, being in a separate room with curtains drawn equals reasonable expectation of privacy. Doesn't matter whose freaking land they're on, morons. I wonder if OP converted for her husband. That might account for the resentment of her religion. 
I had combed through her history before, and it seems like she did convert. There's a deleted post where someone got upset with her for trying to learn Arabic, I believe for her husband. I think she also said that she's white. Certainly doesn't mean that she converted, but it is evidence of it. So according to her sister's logic, I could install hidden cameras as the homeowner to secretly watch my guests get changed, and it's perfectly legal because I own the home. Sister and niece made that up. I would go scorched earth. All fun and games till your logic gets used against you. I bet they'd change their tune real fast if someone did that. I think many people lack empathy. They literally can't picture themselves in other person's shoes. Honestly, I very much agree with that statement. I do think a lot of people lack empathy in situations like this. They can justify in their own heads like, oh, really, it's not that bad that we took this photo. Yes, we did invade your privacy, but come on, everyone's privacy gets a little bit invaded from time to time. Stop being pussies. And then, you know, OP uses that logic against them and suddenly they're butt hurt and because it's happening to them, suddenly it's a big deal. Or, you know, you could just have empathy, picture yourself in OP's shoes and realize, man, I'm being a dick. Anyway, talking myself in circles here, what do you guys think of this one down in the comments below?